Hello there and welcome into Blood Bowl 3 Season Finals. Great to have you here. My name is Adam Savage and boy do we have a treat in store for you these next two weekends. I'm joined by the one and the only Jimmy Fantastic. My friends, we have got some fantastic action for everyone watching at home uh, over the course of today, tomorrow. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing, yeah. All the all the best Blood Bowlers in Blood Bowl 3 and, and what, a, what an unbelievable match to start as well, right? Two of the big streamers. Uh, that's right, Andy. that's right. That's right. And we've got, you know, Andy's actually one of our broadcast team members as well. He'll be joining us over the course uh, of these two weekends. Uh, if you guys at home as well, you may be kind of veteran players or brand new ones. Do not worry, we've got you covered. This is a really exciting opportunity next two weekends to really showcase the wonders of Blood Bowl as well here. Uh, if you're watching to catch you up to speed as well, here the format of our show. Jimmy, I think we should take a look at this. See exactly how we got here in the first place. We had qualifications first and foremost here, uh, followed by a play in there with 56 players. You can see season finals here, 16 players, uh, but two qualified from the ladder match here, from the ladder series, didn't they as well? As well here, Jimmy. Yeah, um, you're breaking up on my end here, but never mind. Uh, yeah, we got uh, the two top of the ladders was uh, Artemis and Crystal Hunter. And then uh, the, the 56 from the play-ins came from, like, variously the ladder and the NAF kickoff event. That's right, that's right. Yeah, you can see here, season final, 16 players. That's who's competing over the course of these next two weekends here. Uh, Jimmy, you know, what are we, what are we, you know, what's going to be in store here? Do you think players are going for all that damage here? Is it about just kind of, kind of, you know, score as many touchdowns as possible? What is going to be the focal point here to ensure you get through to next weekend, be one of those last six players in the competition? Well, for this game, it's all about damage for sure. Um, you know, Artemis has leaned into the damage with his with his claw and, and dirty player and sneaky git, and uh, Andy's got frenzy and armor nine, so loads of strength. So yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a war this match. <laughs> it's gonna be a war. I mean, that's what we want to see. We want to see entertainment. We want to see wars. That's what we're here for. <laughs> We love to see the battles. I'm going to make it bloody as well here. Um, obviously, cash is also up for grabs here. Lots of cash up for grabs. Here. You'll see it on our screen right now. There are ways that you can earn uh, some fantastic prize amounts uh, across these two uh, weekends. Yeah, obviously, next weekend being our, our main finals. Uh, we'll be in a studio then. Can't wait for that. Um, but of course, the, the accolade of walking away as the season finals champion as well, the champion coach. I mean, Jimmy, that's that's something that every single player here really wants. That's, that's the real thing you want on the mantelpiece. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, I, I'll be honest, I was absolutely gutted to not make it. And uh, it's, yeah, it's amazing for these guys. And obviously the cash prize is incredible as well. You know, fantastic for Blood Bowl. I think the whole thing, I think it's been great for the whole community uh, seeing all these games and, and, you know, fantastic, best quality Blood Bowl we've had in, in months and months. <laughs> Dare I suggest, Jimmy, that the, the, the trophy should be should be modelled on yourself. You know, if you're not in the competition, it should be a Jimmy Fantastic trophy. And chat as well. You're a big part of this as well, chat. Get, you know, get as involved in the show as possible. Do you agree? A Jimmy Fantastic trophy would be the creme de la creme going on any virtual mantelpiece. Trust me. Um, obviously, <laughs> Jimmy's like, would it? Would it, though? I think it would, Jimmy. Oh, it would, I think yeah. It, would. it definitely would. <laughs> definitely would. Um, obviously, you know, we've got our, our bracket as well here. Yeah, if you haven't been watching some of the matches online, the great thing is here as well, you'll see uh, an opportunity here for our brackets across the broadcast too. There are streamers, there are players out there. If you don't follow them, make sure to do so as well here. Stay as, as in touch with the competition as possible. And onwards as well, beyond this, uh, this two weekends too. Let's take a look at our bracket as well and catch you up to speed and exactly what's been happening thus far uh, in this competition. You can see here uh, some of the results that have taken place. Uh, this is our winner's bracket. We have, of course, have a lower bracket too here. But for the winner's bracket, um, any particular matchups really stand out to you, Jimmy? Um, yeah, so we had the we had the huge the huge uh, event was Crucifer losing to Moomin Slayer. Crucifer, absolutely one of the favourites, the legend of Blood Bowl 2, undisputed goat of Blood Bowl 2. So uh, him losing the first round, that's, you know, really going to put the cat amongst the pigeons. Everyone will be hoping to avoid him. And, uh, you know, Moomin Slayer, of course, has got has got Underworld. So like, and he's beaten Crucifer. So those two, I think, are the ones to watch. And uh, Inari and huge win over Crystal Hunter. Crystal Hunter topped the ladder. So, uh, you know, Crystal Hunter will be a dangerous force with his Skaven uh, in the loser's bracket. Yeah, it'll be very interesting to see exactly how these these matchups do go down. What with the uh, you know, different factions they're choosing, and kind of like what the yeah what the most popular play will be as well. Here, obviously, might inspire you guys at home to change things up and how you approach things. Uh, come Blood Bowl as well. Here, I mean, um, you know, that I think it's a, a really good opportunity actually to start talking about what's going to be happening in our first match you're going to see here on broadcast. Obviously, as we mentioned, some of them played out already here, and a massive, massive shout out to all the players as well here, scheduling over the course of the last few days, managing to get these matches in, get them played for us specifically 
only so he could do this broadcast, right, Jimmy? So it's a real testament to the players out there. Yeah, yeah, incredible, incredible to organise all these matches and uh, get them all played in like pretty short notice. So yeah, the whole thing—it's been a frenzy of, <laughs> of Blood Bowl. So yeah, they've managed to get it, get it done <laughs> great. It's been an international frenzy. I love that as well. Different time zones. It's been bonkers and everyone's been absolutely unbelievable. So well done, all you guys. Um, let's take a look here at our, our players who are going to be competing in this first match. You know, we talked about, you know, uh, you know, some of the players already competed, but two big players we need to focus on right now. Uh, one of them being Artemis Black. Let's walk through uh, what Artemis is bringing to the competition and the underworld are looking dangerous, my friend. Yeah, this is really weird. He's, he's gone for a lot different than the normal... NAF style that people are used to and this is this is like a NAF style event but it's not because it, there's overtime in it so he's really like leaned into the damage aspect he's he's minimized the snotlings only four usually people go six he's got a sneaky git and a dirty player and then he's got loads of block and uh, wrestle to like protect his best players and stuff and uh, it's pretty pr pretty interesting and then the big one is the rat ogre going claw on the rat ogre to really try and you know really help against orcs funnily enough he was saying orcs and dwarves and lizard men you know and then funnily enough he got orcs in the first round he certainly did courtesy of our man with the plan mr andy davo let's take a look at andy's uh, lineup as well here uh, only taking 12 uh, players into the competition versus that 16 i mean walk us through this one as well here jimmy and the difference that makes as well having a less less you know less players uh, in the squad yeah, he also hasn't got an apothecary either, um, which is, you know, things could get out of hand, uh, and that's that's really not cool. Eh? If he, if Andy goes down, men, you know, then uh, Artemis is going to like steamroll him a bit more, maybe like so that things could snowball without that apothecary in the pocket. He's got three rerolls, which is good, and he's got, you know, he's got a, some guard, he's got a block, and he's got the frenzy. He loves the frenzy. He doesn't have tackle, and a lot of people took tackle. He hasn't got tackle, and that's really gonna, really gonna be tricky for him with these snotlings and goblins not having any tackle at all. Uh, but yeah, I think I think it's a strong team. I think it's a, you know it's, he's made it pretty as strong as he could really, right? Four guard and a mm -hmm. troll. So uh, it's it's, it's going to be super exciting. Yeah, well, I mean, do you think a lot of Andy's, I mean, the way that he kind of goes about business here today will be a lot about kind of nullifying the the damage threat that Art, Art brings to the competition here? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's going to try, he's going to keep his team together, try and stop the big gang fouls, try and stop, you know, roger hits. Uh, if the if the, if the rat ogre gets going with that claw, it's going to be a nightmare for him. So he's going to do everything he can to stop the roger running wild, and the, the huge gang fouls that Art will want to put in. That's right. I mean, for you guys at home as well here, of course, we want you to be as, as big a part of this as possible. So in the chat, in the polls, there'll be polls in there. Let us know who you think is going to go all the way here and who is going to go the distance and win each of our matchups we see on broadcast. And the ones that we don't happen on broadcast as well. Get the chat going. Keep it engaged. Keep it alive. want to hear from you guys as well here. Uh, very, very soon, we are going to be diving into the action. It is coming thick and fast here, and we cannot wait to get this thing started uh, here on the official broadcast here on the Nacon channel. Again, thank you for being here. Um, uh, there is lots to look forward to. There's lots of it. I mean, there's this. I mean, we keep talking about how 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 bloodthirsty this is going to be. We're going to see a lot. I mean, we saw in the last round as well here as well. Andy had I think 10, 10 casualties in his last matchup. This guy's this guy's a, this guy's brutal. He did, yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was unbelievable. Like all three of his games, actually. He had the first game, he did ten cas, outrageous. Second game, he made fourteen removals, and then the third game, he got a pitch invasion that that decided the game. That was the game that went badly for him on the damage. So, so the one time he, he didn't get the damage, he got incredible luck on the uh, on the kickoff event. So that was good for him. It was. It was. Um... Art versus Andy, whatever is going to happen, this is a great game to kick things off. You are seeing Blood Bowl played at the at the, the tippity top of the mountain here. Uh, let's dive on into the action. The game, I believe, is ready to rock and roll. So let's head on into it uh, and see exactly how this one is going to play out. Remember, chat, let us know who you think is going all the way here. We're going to be diving in momentarily here. I, I, dare I ask you, Jim, who you think may be the victor in this match? I honestly, I think it will be, I think it will be Andy. Um, I think that's like the safe choice. I think that's the safe choice is Andy because, you know, Orcs are armor nine. They're really strong. They've got the guard, they've got the block, they've got the frenzy. And uh, Artemis hasn't leaned into the one turn that normally, normally Underworld do. And I think overtime will probably favor the Orcs. I think Art's got to really roll well 
um, or, or like, you know, Andy's going to make a big mistake. And I don't think Andy's going to make a big mistake. You never know. But I don't think he will. So, yeah, I think it's going to come down to Art's going to have to try and get a little bit lucky at some point. I think as well, you know, you know that Andy is joining us on the show later. I think you're just trying to cover yourself into it, making <laughs> sure you've backed our boy just because it could be very awkward later otherwise. I know, I know, I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. Uh, but I know, genuinely, uh, we said Andy's got uh, every every uh, capability here of going all the way, but as does Art. This is a huge uh, game here, and we are ready to rock and roll. Who will be the victor? Would it be uh, the underworld, the orcs? We're about to find out here uh, as we dive on in. Here we go, Jimmy. Here we go. Oh, and yeah, Art's, uh, Art's lost the toss. He's he's having to kick. Andy's chose to receive, and uh, this is uh, it's. Oh, that's the initial battle loss there, right? That's that's not what he wanted. Um, Art really wanted to win the toss and start start getting the damage on. You know. Okay, here we go. Here's the uh, gain skills. So yeah, you can see Claw Rat Ogre is big. Um, two wrestle. Two wrestle clan rats. He's got the tackle for the blitzer, which is you completely useless in this match. So he's 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 lost that utility for other matches. Like he, but he's he's got utility for other matches, but not this one. Uh, he, you know, he could have taken like mighty blow or guard. So he's he was. I guess he was more scared about other underworld or something, and hoping that the claw will carry him versus orcs. And he's got this yeah. sneaky git, dirty player, and uh, yeah, not too many snotlings. Yeah, we, we, Underworld's a, a relatively uh, new, uh, you know, addition to the to the to the game. I think three months ago they were brought in. I mean, I think when uh, the, I, you know, I'm watching a lot of like you know, your, your vods recently and kind of learning more about Underworld. But it seems that you know they are a a tour de force, but there's a certain way to manage the team. And if you can find that, if you can find that niche and, and know exactly how to utilize them, then you are you're in a, you're a strong position. But it, it, you know, it, it can go wrong quite easily. It can, yeah, and especially with this format being overtime, and and just especially with the lack of familiarity, you know, like um, there's other people, you know, that play in tabletop uh, have got to grips with them much better, and I think Elliot particularly, Elliot's played loads and loads and loads of games of Underworld, and he's got he's got a wealth of experience. I don't think Art has that same level of experience, and it's it's what me what put me off using Underworld, despite how like you know they're clearly clearly powerful. Um, Whereas our, uh, Andy here has had loads of experience with Orcs. You know, he's been playing Orcs for years and, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of games with Orcs. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be, I think, you know, the familiarity, it's going to it's gonna matter, right? When the pressure's there, the pressure's on and, and all that sort of stuff, it, it, it does make a big deal. We, we can see now as well, Andy seems to be putting in a, a serious line um, I think I think with I think with the with the way in which this is going to play out, do you think that Andy here will be trying to, I, I guess, be more passive in the opening stages of this, or do you think it'll be and, and just kind of absorbing whatever comes his way? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's he's just he just doesn't want he doesn't want the snowball to start from from our end. That that's what he's terrified of. You know, like if he loses a player early, it's going to mean that you know players will get isolated picked off with claw and dirty player and sneaky git and you know things can go from bad to worse so he, he has to just you know hopefully remove some of these little guys and then keep his foot on andy's uh, on art's neck what's your uh, what's your vibes on on you know on clock and, and you know making the most of that kind of the, the, the time, time management aspect of this as well here do you think that's always a, a big factor come the latter stages of kind of competitions like this it is, yeah. Funnily enough, we have had somebody run out of time um, already in these games. Not normally a factor on the ladder, but, you know, obviously these guys are both good, so they're going to put each other in, in tough situations that they're going to have to think about. Yeah, Art is a much faster player than Andy normally. Like, I've seen Andy go into uh, into time bank quite a bit just in normal in normal streams, which is unheard of for Artemis. So uh, I think Artemis has probably got, like, the best autopilot of everybody in the competition. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he, he, he just bangs out all these games. His fundamentals are there. He's always making safe moves first. So, uh, you know, and, and that's the sort of thing that under pressure people might, uh, you know, might slip up on, right? And there is a lot of pressure, you know, like we, we, this does mean a lot to yeah. all of us. <laughs> It does well, of course it does and, that, and that's the yeah that's the thing that i think is is, is great and why why i love the fact that these two weekends showcasing not only the the you know, the amazing players out there that are you know, that are competing but yet yeah, the community as well here who are a, a huge factor in all this too 
Yeah, for sure. It's been great for the community. Absolutely great. All these matches, you know, there's been loads of people watching it. People come back in for, you know, Blood Bowl 2 they played and then they have, oh my God, well, there we go. Instant, wow. instant cars. <laughs> Andy being, Andy being Andy. <laughs> uh, just as classic. Cashes in early doors. Yeah, this is Art's not going to be happy. <laughs> if anybody knows Art, he does like to complain a little bit when he's playing, and uh, <laughs> that's going to be—he's going to be instantly, you know. And like, I don't know that he's going to tilt, but you know, uh, a lot of people say people tilt when they don't really tilt. But he's certainly not going to be enjoying the fact that uh, he's just instantly had somebody removed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, more than more than aware as well. We kind of mentioned it at the top of the show about the the kind of more veteran players are you know played this you know be it the tabletop the you know, originally they're moving into kind of the digital versions and there's obviously newer players as well coming into this. But um, you know, I, I, the great thing is having yourself and Andy here too. You can add so much kind of like um, in, the inside of knowledge, twenty plus years experience each here of like you know like because I'm sure on streams as well, you guys are you know, regularly streaming. You get loads of questions about the, even the, the basics. I mean, I'm asking you questions every five seconds here for me, but I mean, <laughs> with the basics too, because people really want to kind of get to know the ins and outs of all this. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a funny old game, honestly, Blood Bowl. It's like, it's, ooh, wow. He's, so, yeah, so there's one of the things that, you know, new players might not know. You've got a movement value. If you can go extra ones and you might fail, but he did make the... He did after re-roll. He did. He did go the extra square, but then he failed the pickup. So <laughs> that's pretty crazy. So he was a one in nine chance to fail the pickup, and uh, he's failed that. And now Artemis, even though he's lost a couple of players, might try and put some pressure on the ball here. It's interesting. I think. Super I think for Art as well. This this next this next couple of rounds, having had you know had the kind of a bit of a mishap with obviously you know not getting the toss as well as like what's happened with the injury there too. Is is really going to count now? I think the kind of the way in which he it goes about business here is is going to be a difference maker. I think kind of the latter stages of the, of, of, of the game. Yeah, yeah, this is it. He's he, he's gonna he's gonna have to put somebody in before he blitzes, and I think I think he has to blitz. I think he has to blitz. Well, he could put actually. So the snotlings can do things here, right? He could bring this snotling in, and he could actually blitz the big one, and that could be a an option. Then he then he gets the rope, but then he doesn't want the rover on the troll. So I imagine he'd be blitzing this blitzer and then maybe he's trying to scatter the ball or at least just get the rat over onto the ball. But it's dangerous. Like it's it's because uh, because Andy's got the guard, uh, you know, this rat over here it can do a lot of damage, but it can also get taken out pretty easily as well. So yeah, there's no soft edges as Jim says. Yeah, there's <laughs> like that's the thing, you know, what you want to do is you want to like blitz the guy on the ends, right? So if if the ball wasn't on the ground, he probably blitzes this big one and then fouls him if he can. But his dirty plays on the other side. So, you know, he, so that leaves him to blitz this guy. Well, that's just a lineman. He doesn't want to foul him. So he might go for the ball with just the fact that it's on the ground. And uh, it's oh, he might maybe he's just going for the big one there. Nope. Oh. oh wow! So, <laughs> <laughs> so he got the knockdown, <laughs> and he gave it to the frenzy blitzer. Amazing, amazing. Well, he got the he got the he got the stun, which you know yeah. isn't the yeah, worst yeah. thing. But it did backfire a bit. Yeah, it did backfire a bit. And do you think? I mean, with Art bringing his his rat ogre into play there do you think it's kind of it more exposed now or is it kind of great to make kind of make up the ground and kind of start to infiltrate uh the uh, defensive line oh i think i think this is pretty exposed and he could be losing his he could be losing his rat ogre here and uh with it a big hopes of the game to be honest this is very dangerous this is i mean uh, andy can even foul this this rat ogre as well right he's got 12 players so he's not particularly going to want to foul it but he might you know he can get a huge foul on the roger here so yeah it's an option yeah and so early on in the in <laughs> this head to head as well like first first turns almost this is uh this is incredible <laughs> yeah this is this is not the start artemis was looking for and it's it's and this this is the problem i think with his build a bit right he he leaned into the damage he's he's protected his gut runner with block rather than like using sidestep and two heads like uh, Elliot did, you know, for the one turn. He, mm -hmm. He's gone for protection and protecting his clan rats and 
and the and you know the sneaky git guy is already is already being KO'd instantly, so he's not getting any damage out of that. He's he's got a stun out of his rat ogre, but that might be it for the rat ogre now. He can he can either get zoned out on a lineman or gang fouled. Um, yeah, this is whew, it's going it's going pretty badly already. Mm. The good is thing quite... is he's he's got this. Sorry, he's got he's got this wrestle. This is the good thing because this makes it very dangerous for the ball carrier to hit this this skaven. So that might force the blitz from, uh, from yeah. Andy. Do you think both players? I mean, I mean, is it is it kind of common method? Would you say to kind of keep the game more narrow like this, or do you see like a lot more kind of usage of the of the of the further reaches out, out on the sides as well? Is it kind of more kind of central things have been happening kind of this season? Yeah, so so essentially what you're trying to do on your offensive drive 90, 99% of the time is to grind down the field and score on turn eight. So you don't really want to like you know make an early dash down the side because then you'll get squeezed onto that side and pressed onto the side and then you're going to really struggle. So you want to keep, as an offense, you want to keep as central as possible. So then the defense, you just want to you know deny that center to them as much as possible. So the defense is generally trying to stay stay central and like stop penetration through the middle. And then the the offenses, you know, they they're going to have to like probe around a bit and stuff. And they, you know, the what will usually happen is they'll they'll go a little bit to one side and then cut back to the other side a bit and stuff. But uh, yeah, generally a strong center is is pretty important. We see the last few seconds here starting to tick away of uh, of this particular turn, but huge power. He really didn't knock yeah. down that, that that snotling there. If he didn't knock down the snotling, he he would have really struggled to hit the rat ogre. But now he's uh, he does get to hit the rat ogre here. But yeah, as you say, straight in, straight into the time bank. In fact, Artemis is used a minute and twenty of his time bank. I guess thinking about that big turn uh, with the, the the failed pickup, very okay, uncharacteristic the... of Artemis. Yeah, and for newer players, so like seven minutes, seven minutes, thirty seconds, you ha you can use of, of additional time you can use as and when you want to. Yes, yeah. yeah Funnily yeah. enough, not on setups. I hope I hope that's something that they change in future. Uh, I did suggest it. They've got you know on the Discord they've got a little suggestions channel, and I I did uh, I did suggest that you know hopefully they make they give you that for setups because two minutes for setups can be a bit little if it's like a complicated one turn you're trying to set up. But yeah. uh, the the time bank overall is an amazing addition from Blood Bowl two to three. Uh, it's really great having that extra time bank for the tough turns and you know. Yeah, because two minutes is enough for like the, the simple turns, right? Mm -hmm. But then a, a tough turn could take three or four, so great to have that. So now, now you see, this is this is this is the the problem with Art's build, and and why like you know maybe his lack of experience could be his undoing because with Elliot's kind of standard build, you just lie down. And, and wait for the game to be over, basically. <laughs> well, the half, not the game. Um, but Artemis hasn't got the skills to, to make, uh, like on his players, to, mm -hmm. to make that a very viable. So he's kind of stuck having to fight now. So and he's not that good at it. <laughs> like his team isn't that it. They're good on the front foot, front foot. They're not so good on the back foot. And they're very much on the back foot right now. Yeah, we're going to say, I mean, we've seen already kind of so many of the matchups in this round, winners bracket round one have been played out already here. We've got a, a real big a mixed bag of different kind of like uh, faction chosen from, you know, lizard men to Imperial Nobility. There's, there's, there's tons of different kind of opportunities, I guess, for everyone at home as well to see different ways in which players set up with different, you know, different ones and how they kind of go about business in their, in their matches too. And I think that's, that's what's great. There's a lot of variety coming our way this season finals too. Yeah, yeah. Imperial nobility is one that really only one person in the entire community likes. <laughs> <laughs> Dimmy's cheering for them right now, and it was great. There's always see them. one. There's always one. There's always one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was. It was really great to see them get like such a good package, you know, because uh, these kind of events, like you know, different is a kind of a balancing measure. The different the different races get different packages to choose from. So uh, imperial nobility got loads more skills than orcs and underworld. And uh, it's really made them quite viable. So yeah, you know, normally would never think of seeing Imperial Nobility in this, but you know, Kian Dare's taken them, Cruz has taken them, and you know, Crucifer, undisputed greatest of Blood Bowl too. So 
pretty cool to see those and you know there's there's random teams as well right one scaven team from crystal hunter and uh yeah as you say a few a few lizard men lizard men are always going to be a, a common pick i think that they're, they're basically the second best team but they've got a bad matchup versus the best team <laughs> which is a, a kind of a weird spot to be in right oh absolutely and we definitely we definitely want to see no lizard men versus lizard men do we <laughs> yeah, no, no, no mi mirrored lizard men nonsense. No, that is that is a pet hate of the community for sure. <laughs> it's, it's cool to see it every now and then, but yeah, let, let's try to keep those to a minimum. <laughs> uh, again, here it feels like it feels like Andy is is he's got a real kind of set plan here, a way of like you know, look at the pack, the way he's keeping them all kind of like you know as as congested centrally as possible. Um, which makes it in enormously difficult for art, like art to know where, where where to move to next because everywhere kind of just feels the ball's so so guarded, so protected. Like, how do you how do you kind of ride this storm? Yeah, it, it's 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 really tricky. Like, yeah, it, it, it's a tough lock to pick. I guess he's just going to try and keep off, you know, stay in front, keep all of his guys as many as he's got central, and just try to stop. Try to stop uh, Andy breaking through because yeah, like he's he's really obsessive about this rat ogre, right? Two guards there, another guard there, so he's he's just really making it difficult, really difficult for uh, Art to use this claw mighty um, rat ogre. So yeah, gr great stuff. And then of course, seeing as you're gonna try and zone out the rat ogre anyway, might as well tuck your ball in as well. And you know, if you can keep removing players, then eventually there's going to be holes open in the defense. Oh wow. Art is putting oh, on the gutter runner. This is, sneaky gutter runners. This is super interesting. Yeah, this is super interesting. Well, it's the amount of ground covered, isn't it, as well? You can really change things up very quickly. Yeah, I mean, well, the the thing is, like, now is, is will, will Andy be able to hit this gutter runner? <laughs> and if he is, will he be able to kill it? And I don't really know... What the plan is? He's gonna. <laughs> he's, he's, he's gonna blitz, he's gonna going blitz on, this guy. He's, yeah. gonna, he's, he's gonna blitz this guy, but I don't know what the plan is to protect the gutter. Maybe he's just not gonna protect the gutter. It's got block, and and Andy doesn't have uh, Andy doesn't have tackle, so maybe he just thinks, you know, he's not gonna get hit or not get killed when he does get hit. Maybe he's hoping that'll be like a distraction to stop to stop uh, Andy just pushing through the center relentlessly. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Yeah. Well, it's why, it's why the play, you know, the, uh, the the coaches who are here in this competition in season finals, it's it's there's so much. I mean, you, you know, as well as well as anybody, you know, the amount you have to kind of like think through in your head mathematically and uh, tactically as well. Almost every single turn here, um, I guess, having to adapt to any given situation is what is you know what separates the, the best of the best you know from the rest of the pack. I guess it does, yeah. That's a good point, and 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 again, that's when the experience comes in, right? Like, Art hasn't been in this situation that many times. I think he's only played about fifty games with with uh, Underworld, whereas Andy's, you know, probably played five hundred with Orcs or something at least. Yeah. So he's and you know he's played loads of tabletop. He's he's got into these kind of drives before many many times, and Art doesn't play tabletop, so he, he's you know this format is a bit alien to him, and mm -hmm. and Underworld are a bit alien to him, so. Yeah, yeah, he's moving the ball. I, I, I thought he would. I thought. I think this was. I think this was like a bit of a decoy from Artemis. You know, hoping that because it's turn four of the drive now, we're, we're getting to the, you know, getting towards the business end of the drive. Orcs mm -hmm. aren't fast. They, they can't dodge very well. So you know, they really do want to. They really do want to get. You know, make some headway through this team, and and just yeah. staying where they were wasn't going to cut it. Speaking of experience that you talked about as well here, like, you know, when you think about players who have come into the community and been are relative newcomers to a degree, do you find, has there been, has there been many cases of when you have someone who is like a bit of an unknown comes in and just starts to do unbelievably well to kind of people's ears prick up and go, okay, what's happening here? Or do you kind of see like the tried and tested veteran players are the ones who usually have excelled in, in recent times? Um, I guess recently we haven't had anyone come in. I guess the most recent is Artemis. I, I guess the most recent is Artemis, okay. who's who's come in. Uh, he, you know, he came in during Blood Bowl two, and he went from like you know not a very good player to a very good player. Whereas I, I can't think of anyone else off the top of my head who's who's you know come in to be a top level player. Generally, they've come from somewhere else like tabletop 
or fumble or stuff like that, and and they haven't just come from nowhere. I think I think Art is the is pretty much the only one who's come in from nowhere. <laughs> He played it when he was a kid. I think he played it when he was a kid, and then you know he he, he found out the Blood Bowl Two was a thing, it. and that's when he came back in. Rediscover the rediscover discover the country, Blood Bowl Three. I mean, who who knew? I mean, you can see as well, like you know, the I think that it takes it, it it's a lot of gusto as well here, yeah, you know, to say right, I'm I'm going with Underworld. You know, I'm, I've not played as many games as you mentioned other players as well, but willing to take that chance into season finals, believing in his ability, which I think kind of says a lot about his character too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I didn't believe in my ability to win with Underworld. <laughs> oh, Jimmy, I, I, I believe in you. I believe in you. But I regret it now, though, because I think, I think I would have done better with them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it. They're they're a top, 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 top team, and and it's understandable to to want to use them. But um, yeah, I just, I just, you know, maybe I'm overvaluing. The experience factor, and maybe he undervalued the experience factor. I guess we'll find out based on what happens. <laughs> I know you can see, and Andy's, you know, managed to switch things up and really kind of make that make that drive towards the uh, the right hand side of the screens here now. Um, and you know, Art doing what he can to, to re flank here, but I think this will be very testing as well here. The fifth turn here of Andy now, how how he's gonna. You know, utilize the, the the time that he has obviously the the, the, the rounds that he has until um as you make way towards the half time point but he's uh he's in a strong position like he's got his the, the, he's got the, the the play with the ball kind of guarded well um what do you think what do you think he is going to be kind of like this particular turn turn five what's his kind of the strat that you would play jimmy because obviously you are fantastic your name says so <laughs> what would you do in this given situation well first i'd breathe a sigh of relief that artemis just made a terrible absolutely terrible play there he didn't blitz anybody and uh, the rat ogre, to, to, if it does a blitz, it needs to roll a 2 plus to blitz, but it needs to roll a 4 plus to move. What he could have done was declare a blitz on any player mm -hmm. and then just move and not blitz that player. <laughs> so because he hadn't oh, blitzed that right. turn, he should, he should have said, yes, I'm, I'm t really honestly, I'm going to blitz this guy <laughs> and then just got up and moved somewhere completely different. So that is that was a big mistake from out there. Uh, you know, he could have had he could have had the rat ogre here or here. I don't know where he's going to put him. Um, and now, yeah, he's just he's just going to mash in. He's going to mash in with all this guard. He almost can forget about the rat ogre now. It's so far away. Um, he is going to he is going to think about the rat ogre. He it, he's a, I bet I bet he's disappointed about this lineman because it would have been great for that lineman just to stand on the on the rat ogre and like you know totally zone him out. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think he'll keep this formation here. This like kind of L behind the ball. Doesn't want doesn't want Artemis to to come in and smash him with the rat ogre. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's a, it's a great great start for Andy. I, oh, did Hello? you forget Hello? about that guy last turn? <laughs> he might have done. Anybody else but, back there? No. Sorry, I'm late, lads. Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> Going traffic. <laughs> he actually, he actually could have come across to 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 take out the rat ogre. Like it's not great, right? Because uh, and he could do it with this one as well. You don't really want a valuable player hit by the rat ogre, and he could. There's a dirty player as well, so you really wouldn't want a valuable player hit by the rat ogre there. But yeah. he could have done it with one of the linemen. I was basing the gut runner last turn. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, look at look at the, uh, the players Sinbin out of action, injured knocked out on the sidelines there for art you can see the kind of damage and we talked about it earlier on that andy you know previous rounds has done some serious work on uh, you know uh, busting up other players and yeah that you know on the field and he's con he's continued that in the in this particular first round of the uh the winner's bracket here i mean it's uh it's it is strong but i, I mean I guess what we come to expect it, but again, experience plays a massive part in this. I think Andy could have knew that if he was gonna if there's any way to get past art in this particular uh game, he he knew he had to, I guess, match force with force because he knew that that's exactly how art was gonna come back to him business. Yep. Oh, here we go. So yeah, we and this time he's declared the blitz. Is he going to blitz? No, not now he's done the right thing. He's declared the blitz and just moved him back. Um yeah, like that he he has to he has to protect protect more than attack really you know he, he has to try and stop this rat ogre um getting the big hits in but this is a pretty strong screen from artemis here mm. a lot of players in the way so it's 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 not over it's not over here three turns to to smash through this yeah i think the, 
This is the weak link here, but that takes you nearer to the ogre, um, and that, that I mean, like, he's straight away gone for this. But it does it does bring in the rat ogre, so I wonder if he'll try and tag him off at the back with the uh, with a lineman or what? Interesting. Maybe he'll be, well, he's not going to probably not going to hit the rat ogre now because he's, he might be hitting the rat ogre. Yeah, oh. the block biggen. This block biggen could hit him. Bring somebody in front and then leave him on the blitzer. I would have rather lift him on the lineman, so... Interesting. Interesting that he's not leaving him on the lineman. I mean, he must be blitzing the Rattoga now with two players on him. Yep. And he's thinking, the more the merrier over here, lads. The more the merrier. <laughs> Take this bad boy out. Um, you know, the sixth turn, I mean... As far as the matches played thus far, would you would you suggest that Andy still has a is in a good position comparatively? Oh, very good. Yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Very likely to to get the job done here. Um, you know, he's, he was never going to score early. Uh, you know, I, it's kind of suicide to score on turn seven. So, mm. so he's he's doing everything he can to uh, score on turn eight this try for sure. And even even then. Um, Artemis will have a chance to score back in one turn, which you know could be. You know, it's a great, great thing that the Underworld have. They have the best chance to score in one turn of anybody else, like yeah. of, of all the teams. So, uh, ni nice little block into a, into a follow up block here. Um, and yeah, get yeah get central. You, you want to get central as possible all the time, basically. So just so you've got the option to go either side. And now he's so far into the to the half. You know he's got he's. He's got probably one, two, three, four, five, six. He's got one square, one square of lateral movement mm -hmm. available. So um, it's not bad, and he'll, you know, he'll want to get further forward. But he hasn't got that far forward, right? So maybe I guess Artemis screened two squares back with the, with all of these guys last turn, so they would definitely have those free to make the screen directly in front of the ball. And then if he makes these dodges off, um, that could be that could be very nice indeed. to see what the results were in our poll as well here who the uh who the, who the viewers at home thought could be the the winner of this particular match um, i love you guys getting as involved as possible as we said this this is this is just the first of many games here this is the first round as well here in the winner's bracket we've got plenty more coming your way today obviously lower bracket tomorrow but that's the great thing there are qualifiers today there are players going out the competition tomorrow. We're whittling it down to six players, Jimmy, for next weekend. I mean, that's the thing. The, the, the six players, we started with 16, 10 players uh, knocked out over the course of this weekend. That's that's an, that's an enormous chunk of the pack there. It really is, isn't it? Yeah, that's good. They're going to be pretty pretty sad <laughs> to, to miss out <laughs> a bunch of people. But, uh, you know, oh, it's, it's tough, isn't it? It's tough. Like, I think like. it's there's a lot of pressure, you know, and I... I it, it, there's a lot of dice. There's a lot of pressure, and you know, we've seen we've seen some of the favourites already lose, and and now they they're fighting for their life, aren't they? They've got to win, they've got to win like two or three to to make it through at this point. Yeah, of course. I figured as well here. Uh, as, uh, yeah, we talked about the kind of uh, the, the the trophy that will be kind of molded in your image, Jimmy. It's <laughs> obviously a big factor here. I would also love it if we could also instill a button that when you press it, it does the it does the classic. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> no, I like that. Oh, is it stay fantastic? Stay fantastic. Stay fantastic. Stay fantastic. I, you would, I would incredible? happily get one of those. Yeah. Do you know what's incredible? Yeah, go on. The, uh, the Chaos Warriors, when, when they make an armor break in this game, they yeah. do actually do the two thumbs up <laughs> to celebrate. <laughs> so that, you know, there was, one, there was one guy streaming every time he made a, every time he made an armor break with his Chaos Warriors, he was like, stay fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> You need, to, you, need to, you need to bring out like your own selection of like uh, greetings cards as well. You know, the one that you kind of open them up. There's like a sound effect. I'd love to have that too. Stay fantastic. Happy birthday. I'd love to. I'd love that. Ooh, a, a whole merch line in this place. The last hour, Jimmy. The whole merch line coming everyone's way, courtesy of your fabulous face. I can't wait for it to happen. Let's go. <laughs> that would be incredible. It would be. Um, it would be. Oh, I mean, so this is a dream here for Andy. He gets to blitz the rat ogre and score. Um, and and look, it was the gob. The goblin failed because he was a goblin, right? Uh, he rolled a one and a two. Um, snotlings are ostensibly worse than goblins. Snotlings cost fifteen k. Goblins cost forty k. Snotlings are at strength one, and goblins are strength two. But the thing is, goblins get smashed just as easy as snotlings for the most part. So mm. snotlings are basically just better because they dodge on twos. 
um, and have sidestep. So if you don't splat a snotling for whatever reason, he gets in he gets in like tricky spots. Whereas like, it's actually, I just think it's just genuinely a better player, and mm-hmm. it's cheaper. And I think you know, Art he went for the extra AV of the uh, goblins and the extra strength. And I just think I don't know. I'm, I'm not. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of uh, what he's done. <laughs> So yeah, this is great. He'll he'll be able to he'll be able to, you know, he'll he'll just block here with with one of the uh, blitzers. I'm sure. I'm sure he's not gonna troll block. Mm-hmm. Yeah, three dice to the gutter is amazing. Gets the power. Could foul. He actually could foul. He, he, do you know what? He'll he'll want to block with the troll. He'll want to block with the troll. But the troll is like a one in twenty-seven chance of failing, and the uh, the the blitzes are like a one in a thousand chance of failing. So, <laughs> so he does go. He does greedily go for the troll. I mean, he wanted to because that that lets him get the blitzes up in front, and it lets him make this foul as well. So yeah, I think that was right to be a bit greedy there. We are very close to an to an Andy Davo one zero in this uh, this round one. Okay, some of the scores as well. You know, we've seen kind of you know, some of the, the scores I can see coming through. Uh, yeah, we've had like Hiru and Smiles only a one zero. Uh, same goes for Cal Troop versus Botaners one zero in the similar round. So not not massively high scoring games. Others different. You know, um, Eliod and Diamed three two. I mean, there's there's been some get games with big you know big scores. Others you know kind of keep it a bit lighter. But I mean, at the end of the day, you get the victory. You you go to the next round. That's what that's what our players really want to see. They want to taste the next round more than anything else. That lo- that losers bracket ain't be ain't be tasting or smelling anywhere near as good. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. I mean, once you're in the losers bracket, you're fighting for your life every game, aren't you? Oh, he rolls a double six on the armor, so he is sent off. Will he be able to argue the call? He doesn't, so he does lose. He does lose, and you know this feeds into Art a little bit, right? That, that mm-hmm. that's a removal for Art. So <laughs> finally, the first damage of the game from Art and Mrs. point of view was done by <laughs> Andy off. to himself. <laughs> Brilliant. So he's actually come out of this quite quite well in terms of damage, um, mm. Art and Miss. He's all, you know they've they've traded casualties, and he's only got a couple of KOs. Like he really has. It's just that he hasn't been able to get on on top. That's the problem. Um, you know, uh, Andy did did basically deal with the ogre after it after it ran into. Oh, and here we go. It falls down and gets oh. KO'd. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Artem- it's funny because Artemis, you know, says about safe moves first and everything, and then none of these players moved. And yeah, I c- yeah, I completely understand that. Yeah. They could have. They could have assisted. They could have made this a three dice block. They would have been there, ready to assist fouls. He just. He just did this. Maybe he just wanted to, you know, abandon trying to score, stop the score completely. When I um, when I first started playing, I did the exact same on a regular basis. I would always. <laughs> I'd never really. It, 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 I guess it comes with experience, time, thinking. Okay, let's make play the safe plays first. Then let's start getting a bit crazy towards the end. Yes. Um, when you don't, it, it costs you. I kept, I had to keep like pinching myself, saying, "Come on, Savage, you're better than this." <laughs> um, and eventually, I started to kind of like drill it into myself. But it took a while. Yeah, and he did actually use his apothecary there. So yeah, that's the apothecary gone for Artemis. So he's now he's susceptible to uh, further injuries. He would have got this Rattleger back 50% of the time anyway, but he just puts it in to make sure he's got the best chance of the one turn possible. Oh, there's a the cars. Nice, really nice getting that random cars. And gets the touchdown. First TD of the game. Wow. And he takes the lead. The Orcs are in a strong position here. Yeah, Turn very strong. Yeah. Very strong, yeah. This is uh but we're about to see, we're about to see how strong it is now. Um Artemis has saved all of his re-rolls. So we're gonna see the uh People who are new, this might blow your mind. <laughs> it, it it did the first time I saw this sort of thing there, because you know, like I I started I started playing this so long ago, right? Nineteen ninety four was when like the modern rules came out, and the first time somebody pushed a guy into scoring range, it absolutely blew my mind. Um, and so now, you know, we've got Art, Art, Artemis has the chance to push somebody into scoring range here. And score a one-turn touchdown. He's got three reels for it. He hasn't got the skills for it, 
you know, he could have had Juggernaut on his Rat Ogre, he could have had Sidestep on his Blitzer, uh, on his Gutter Runner, and he could have had two heads on his Thrower, but he hasn't taken those skills, and he hasn't been able to fight, so <laughs> now he's just going to rely on, on stopping this just by, you know, well, uh, scoring this just by, you know, rolling some good dice. But he does have three rerolls, so he's got he's got half a chance. I'm just, I, I, I was inspired when you said 1994 to look up things that happened in 1994. Well, I can have like big world changing events. Can, can you can you name the film in 1994? Chat, this is for you actually as well here. What what do you think was the most successful film in 1994? Oh my god, Dances with Wolves. <laughs> that's, a, that's a top top draw suggestion there i love that from you was that even it was that even i mean it's not the answer i was looking for but still when did that come out did that come out that year i've got no I mean, idea jimmy fantastic there's a, oh it's a 1990 film wow oh, wow okay wow. okay uh i don't know what uh, uh, chat 1994 what was the <laughs> oh robin hood's a good shout robin hood's a... do you know Mate, what prince of thieves from... was unreal yeah Honestly, the only not that long ago, Dimi, the only thing that I remember from 1994 is yep. uh, Roberto Baggio, Sky in the Penalty. In the World I'll Cup. never, I'll never ever forget that. <laughs> yeah. I'll never forget that for as long as I live. Yeah. Because yeah. when he went to that match, everyone was like, "This guy is is the nuts. Like he is he is the chosen one, and nothing yeah. can go wrong." And when he did that, everyone went, "Oh, that's that wasn't in the script. What the hell happened there?" <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, unbelievable. Looking, looking at the limited uh, searching that I've done, which I, I in all of a second, um, 1994 <laughs> biggest film, Forrest Gump. Oh, Forrest Gump. Did anyone Big get? Time. Somebody must have got that. Someone yeah, must have got that. Fimea, Fimea did. Well done. Nice Fimea, legend, the great stuff. Nice. Love that from you. That's a that's a great shout. That. And that is, it's show. a great movie. Yeah, great movie. That is great that film. Is a good one. Do you, people people tend to say that I mean and I agree to a degree it's it's very good but the Shawshank Redemption gets a lot of love a lot of like oh it's the greatest film of all time yeah I'm like it's it's good for sure but <laughs> is it Back to the Future I don't think it is it's not Back <laughs> to the Future is it? let's be honest <laughs> <laughs> oh dear oh fun, funnily enough artemis is a bit of a movie buff and he, he he always he takes every opportunity he can to to insult shawshank redemption he's like it's okay but it's nothing special <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a funny a funny little thing to to have in this cast that's a hell of a kick if this if this uh, wow uh, which square is it if if this is it's not it can't go out unless it's changing weather so that is a super deep kick it's not changing weather Oh my god. Absolutely horrible. Horrible really for Artemis. Oh gosh. Oh my god. It's like it's like the second best possible square. Oh, uh, third best square for uh for Andy. Uh, unbelievable. They picked up the ball. So that starts. It's the pickup. Is this a four plus pass, maybe? No, three. Three. Oh yeah, so it was a four plus, and that now makes it a three. Gets it, gets the catch. Okay. Okay. So, All right. We're back in. Yeah, this is okay. I think he's got to do a one dice block on the uh, troll to start this off. It is a two plus. Is all he needs. All right, he's gonna do that first. I don't think he needs to. Ah, so he's moving that so he can do the handoff now. Okay. Gets the handoff. Gets the push. So he's going to push him to there. And then the second one, right? No, no, no. Oh, my God. Okay, so he eats, the, he eats a goblin instead of a snotling. That could have been a snotling, which Artemis doesn't like. But he, he chose the goblin. So he's, mm. he's just going to get one push forward here, rather than two, and he powers, so he has to re-roll this, powers, he could have, he could have actually filled everything with snotlings first, if he had more snotlings, but um, I mean he removes a player, but yeah, didn't get three dice on it, 
and uh, I mean couldn't get three dice on it, and doesn't doesn't get the touchdown. Really starting to look ahead at the um, the rest of the competition here and kind of seeing exactly how you know depending on if, if this result stays the same as it does at one zero to Andy, how that will affect things in the next round. And I'm looking at you know Artie. I think but looks at things on the bracket and the lower bracket will be facing Plotinus, who I believe has got dwarfs, as we know. They're pretty strong against the underworld, so <laughs> yeah, that, that's probably not a good look for Artie if he goes into that 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 position in the table. No, it, it's actually um, it's actually really put the really. I mean, I don't know if Artemis knows or not, but if he doesn't, if he doesn't know, that's re if he if he does know, it's really put the pressure on because yeah, he really wants to avoid dwarves in the next round. Like, it, it, you know, obviously, Call Troop won. Right, and not take anything away from Call Troop, but if you've got the option of playing of playing dwarves or humans, you you definitely definitely hundred percent choose the humans. It doesn't matter who's coaching them or anything. You you definitely want humans and not dwarves. It, it's a much 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 better matchup. So yeah, it's oh, now, I mean now Artemis the only win the, the only way he wins this from this point is getting to overtime, and and winning in overtime, and and that's when the attrition is really going to matter. So you know. Maybe his decision to go for the attrition route is going to pay off now because he's got the sneaky git, he's got the dirty player, he's got the claw ogre, and you know he's still got a bunch of reserves. So you know maybe it will pay off going for the damage route. It can still pay off, but uh, that wasn't it. Wasn't a great one turn attempt. Like he he didn't he, he could have done a lot better. Or, or well maybe he couldn't, but uh, Elliot could have done a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> He does. He does need to play for the kills. Yeah, he has absolutely got to play for the kills. He, yeah. Well, it looks like he's dackering. Okay. Interesting. So, so the dacker is is something that uh, it's a, it's a funny name for a funny style of playing, which um, a lot of a lot of like intermediate players won't know it. Um, never mind beginners. Um, so the idea is it was popularized by a, a guy called Matt Dacker on Fumble. And the idea is you just literally run everybody back and away from the opposing team and just like, you know, it's like kiting. It's like kiting in, in, a, in a video game. I can't believe it took the community that long to like latch onto it because it's such like a popular video game kind of thing to do. You just literally pull everybody back, stand right near your own end zone. And then, you know, the opposing team, you wait for the opposing team to come and chase you. And then they leave an opening, you slip past them, and then you, you stall out the half from there. And it just gives you all this space behind them, you know, that you wouldn't have. So it's, it's a great strategy, great tactic. It's been, it's really been popularized and perfected very recently, like very recently, like the last year or so, which is kind of crazy, right? Because considering the game has barely changed in, in like 30 years. And it's, it's really just the last year is when it's, become really a very big part of Blood Bowl, I'd say. A withdrawn offence, yeah. Some people like calling it a withdrawn offence, but it is a dacker. <laughs> it's fair. It's fair, it is a dacker. isn't it? It's a dacker, yeah. So, yeah, that was why he put the rattle go all the way back so that he didn't have to, you know, try and move it. And Andy knows how to handle the dacker. Is it a good tactic? It is a great tactic. People love to say, uh, this is one of the most uh, silly things that people say, is that the dacker's better against worse coaches than it is against good coaches. It's like, yes, so, so is a normal offense. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, it's hard to score against Andy. If you, if you just try and play normally against Andy, you'll find it very, very difficult to score against him. And, and you know, so yes, you will find a, da a dacker difficult against Andy, but you, you will just find playing properly difficult against him as well so um the the, the key thing here is andy's one nil up so all he has to do is is just defend he doesn't have to go and check what ha what happens a lot of the time with the dacker is if it's like nil nil or you're one nil ahead they, they've got to like you know kind of over pursue you uh, in this situation andy just needs to hold the line and not leave any gaps and, and you know, then he's really going to force Art to do something crazy to break through it. But he, he, you know, he does have the he does have the rattle, so maybe he can. Am I wrong for wanting to see the crazy? Is that is that bad of me? <laughs> that's, 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 that's that's great. I mean, there's a lot of crazy in Blood Bowl. Like the the, the like when I got into it in the nineties, like you know, I, I loved all of like the the background and stuff. It's it's completely crazy. It's a uh, you know, they, they, they've kind of translated that, right? Cyanide with the, the video game representation of it. You know, you have like the, all the kills and everything. Oh, yep, here we go. Well, he's, he's just going back. 
and this is the thing he can do this he can do this because he's ahead i think if he if he was you know if it was nil nil maybe he wouldn't do this and if he, if he was one nil or if he was on one nil behind he definitely wouldn't do this but he's just gonna he's just gonna sit back yeah i think that's probably okay <laughs> so now Art is probably just going to stay where he is, I think, for one turn. He might move up this turn and then try to break through next turn. But I think, he, yeah, he's just going to move a little bit. He's going to move a little bit to get himself into a better position on turn 12 to break through on turn 13. So the big thing that this does is, is it lets you control the turn counter because, as, as I alluded to earlier, you really want to score on turn 8. If you score on turn, like, you know, say, like, let's say he scores on turn 4, and the Orcs have got five turns to score back, and he probably just loses 2-1. So he really wants to score on turn eight. And and then this, like, just burning turns at the start of the drive, you know, that that leads into him getting a later breakthrough and mm -hmm. having to stall less and having a lot more space to stall in. Glorious goal splits, yeah. He's learning from his, his mistake earlier. So Andy's using this this uh, kind of staggered formation near the sidelines to stop the mm -hmm. Rat Ogre Surf. Look at the turns as well now. The turns are going are you know are so much more fluid and quick and fast paced now as well. Um, will, they, will, we, will this be playing into Andy's? And will he, will he like the way that this game is shaping up now in terms of the way in that Artemis is you know, play, uh, you know, attempting to outplay him? Do you think Andy's got? He knows what's coming his way, and he can definitely counteract it, whatever, whatever you know, shape or form it might take. I think I think he'll feel confident that he's one nil up. I think if it was one one, and he was having to chase him down, or, or if he was holding this at one one, I think he'd be very, very, very nervous. Mm. Uh, now he's like basically free rolling, right? If if uh, if Art does break, like, you know, does break through and score, it's not that bad. He'll he'll still get overtime. So yeah, he'll he'll, he'll be very happy by having the. The, the overtime in, you know, in his pocket, even if it does go wrong. Mm -hmm. I've got one last, you know, we were talking about 1994 earlier on, you know I mean? mm. but one last, I've got one last thing for chat here. You guys are interested, okay? Just out of curiosity, what was the biggest selling video game in the world of 1994? Oh man. Just have a think, have a think chat. Don't, don't start researching. Don't be, <laughs> don't, don't be that person and going, oh, it might be this. Don't do that. Just have, just have, a go. Just try and just try and think what it might be. I think you probably can get it. I mean, have, just have a think. Have a think. Oh, to Tomb Raider is a shout, isn't it? Is that ninety four? Could have been, couldn't it? Or Tomb Raider two? <laughs> I don't think. I don't think the PlayStation one was out yet. No, maybe not. Maybe too early. So, was the N sixty four before? I I I think I think we're looking at. I think we're looking at, at SNES SNES Mega Drive era. SNES. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. See, the other time I went, I went too far back with with, with Dances with Wolves. I, I, now I'm on more like '98, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, '94. Ooh. Mario Kart. Honestly, you could guess Mario Kart literally, literally any any year and have a decent chance, I guess. <laughs> that is that. That's true. I mean, I, I, so so P, so the so PS One came out in 1995 in Europe and uh, America, North America. Uh, N64 was '96. So we're looking at the SNES. Was looking at SNES and uh, and Mega Drive. <clears throat> So I'm seeing. I'm, I'm looking at the chat right now, you guys, and seeing if you can find anything. What's uh? I love the, the Blood Bowl one shout. Love that. Love that. <laughs> um, there's there's a lot of great shouts in this. A lot of great shouts here. I'll give it another minute or two, then I'll then I'll come clean. But this is it's great. Everyone, I love this as well. Oh, actually, no. Someone someone has someone's definitely popped it out. Okay, we'll, we'll get it. We'll get a. Out in a minute. Uh, right, looking at the game here as well. Here, Jimmy. I mean, four four turns left. Uh, currently, right now, we've got RT on turn thirteen. Um, only four players kind of on the sidelines at the moment, so he's in, a, I guess, a better position he was at the same time in the last half. Uh, yeah. But again, they're kind of moving adjacently, aren't they? Together as uh, as as walls of you know of of power, blood, and guts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's interesting. He's exposed the thrower here, which is like a great hit to make. It's a great hit to make, but he's kind of on the wrong side, right? He's got the block big in there, and he's got a gun. He's got more players over this side. 
He's got the frenzy back protected, so he can try and surf anyone that goes totally over the side. I think Art's going to want to hit this big one because he's, you know, he's strength five, the big and strength four, so it's like a natural thing. Like you don't want your strength five on strength three. You, you, you know, you don't want your strength, his strength four, pulling your strength three. You want your five on his four. So you, you might blitz this guy in his guard as well. So a great removal if you can get the removal, and then try and pile in around this side. The problem is with piling around this side is, you know, the the frenzy might come in, and uh, it means not being able to hit the weak link of the thrower over here. But I, I think, oh, he's going to have to eat a player. Goblin, maybe? Yeah, it's got to be a goblin. Oh. Oh. Um, did you just... He just hit the wrong player. <laughs> he just literally could have hit the non-sticky git player. That's weird. Is, is he going to oh, dodge yeah, through? He must have going to dodge through this turn then. He does make a removal. He must be. He must be going to dodge through. That's the only thing that makes sense to not eat this. But this one. Very strange. Maybe he didn't see him because he was in front of the right ogre. That is a, it's a tactic from Blood Bowl 2 where you used to hide a player behind the big guy because, you know, it's not always easy to see them behind. So Inarin used to <laughs> Love always... Love that tactic. <laughs> yeah, Inarin used to always hide his players behind. <laughs> yeah, he had a tree man and he always hid it behind the tree man and uh, that, might have, that might have been what, what befell out there. That is such a classic. Love that mm. play. Um, I, 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 by the way, just so you guys know in the chat as well, I'll come clean. 1994, the biggest game. Lots of you guys got it in the chat. Congratulations. It was Donkey Kong Country. Donkey mm. Kong Country, Super Nintendo. Boom. You all nailed that. Very, very good. What a game it was. <laughs> um, what a game it was. And what can I say as well? What what a, a broadcast is. I'm so I'm so pleased uh, that Naquan has put this all together, uh, along with their production partners. It's been. I mean, I mean, Jimmy, this is for, for you as well. Who is such a such an intrinsic part of, of the. Blood Bowl community as well as a streamer and player of the game. How great is it to see that the two weekends are broadcast officially? There'll be a studio aspect to it next weekend. I mean, this is this is superb for Blood Bowl and, and the future of this game. Yeah, unbelievable. I was so I was made up when I heard out heard about it all and stuff. It's you know invited to be one of the uh, analysts. Absolutely incredible. I love the whole thing. Like you know, I was already covering you know all the replays on my own channel and everything and. You know, every everyone's rallied behind it. I think everyone's loving this tournament, and it's it's just great for Blood Bowl. Absolutely fantastic. Since we are now zapped, just like you, buddy. Fun. Yeah, exactly. Just like you. <laughs> I did set that one up a little bit, didn't I? You did. But you know what? I, I felt it. I just hit it home. I, it felt right. It felt right to me. <laughs> no, but the wonderful thing about this as well, obviously, of course, um, it's myself, um, who I, I feel so lucky to be here too, alongside the likes of Jimmy and Andy as well here. Obviously, we see competing right now, but Andy, Davo, part of the team too, the three of us. Um, looking forward to hearing his perspective too. I mean, the fact that he's competing one second and joining us to, to cast and analyze the next. I mean, the guy, the guy's doing doing everything. This is amazing. Um, but uh, having having the insight, actually being involved in this match and then kind of digesting afterwards, I'm looking forward to that as well. As well yeah for sure yeah very interesting interesting perspective he'll have um and oh, man this is this is he's got himself into a bit of a pickle here out like he's got loads of rerolls so he, he can chuck loads of rerolls of getting through but this is this is very dodgy very very dodgy for artemis right now we see we see a lot of our players who are you know competing have got you know a, a big variety of re-rolls i mean there's as many as five two i mean whatever it might be um but your players how integral are re-rolls particularly if you're kind of starting out in this game do you think they're a vital part of that so you can kind of really get to grips with the dice or or not so much well we just saw a bit how vital they were there is that that would have absolutely shattered andy's defense he wants to save the re-rolls for overtime because there's potential overtime, right? But if he if he if he took that double down there, his defense is completely over. So so that was that reroll itself was crucial and gets an A V break as well. Amazing. Um yeah, they're they're pretty crucial. They're they're more crucial now than they ever were. Um in previous editions of Blood Bowl, you could only use one reroll on one turn. Whereas now you can put all of your rerolls into one turn. So you know you you can negate multiple fail states in one single turn. And, and you know, roll a whole bunch of dice and make all crazy things happen. I've many times I've used three rerolls in one turn. So, in in you know, Blood Bowl three, I in Blood Bowl two, I'd say like you know, two rerolls is, is good, and you kind of want three. Wow, I do not like this reroll. 
Um, <laughs> I, maybe Andy's just thinking he's going to win in normal time because that was a, that was a pretty rowdy reroll there. Um, so whereas now I'd, I'd start, I'd, I'd want three, and I really want four now. Now I think I think you you know rerolls are super super duper important now. It just lets you try things that you just yeah. couldn't try before. Oh, he's GFing. He's I mean he's absolutely failing this. Oh, is he leaping? Was he jumping over to hit the ball? I I think he was jumping over to hit the ball. Yeah, it was jump over. Oh wow. That was really cool. So yeah, he was going for the, he was going for the four plus to hit the gutter runner, <laughs> and so that's why I guess he rerolled that hit. So it wasn't it wasn't a great one to reroll, but he was rerolling it so he could try this four plus to hit the ball, oh, and obviously I mean, he couldn't cool. use the last reroll on that one. That would have been special. What is over yeah, over there's a four plus there, Jay Leave. Yeah, it's it's into a tackle zone, right? So um, so yeah, that was that wasn't necessary at all. Yeah, maybe. Maybe this is going to give Artemis, you know, a bit of an window in to swing around. Yeah. yeah, it's what he needs now. He needs a window, doesn't he, to kind of just for something to break for in his favour. Oh yeah, he could have used jumping to here. Okay, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, and that's a big, that's a big break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was jumping to here. Um, so, so yeah, it was a three plus jump over. That was actually a really great, really great attempt. Really great opportunity for uh, for Andy. I wonder if he should have done that before this pointless block, right? Like he did this block, mm. and it wasn't really achieving a whole lot. And all it did was was suck out the reroll, which then meant that he couldn't reroll the thing that he really wanted to do, uh, which was jump over there. So interesting, interesting. Looking at the clocks as well. I mean, they both got. You know, Plus, you know, more than four minutes worth of time extra as well here. I mean, for I guess for for, for art, the overtime is is definitely. I mean, there's four re rolls as you mentioned as well. It's a, it's a huge difference maker if this goes the distance. But he has to, he has to make these next three turns count because that is all that's left in this winners bracket round one. Um, yeah, it, it's. I mean, we, 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 we love living on the edge. We love a cliffhanger. <laughs> and I think that every single one of these matches these next few weekends is going to deliver that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow, that was a big one dice there. Um, yeah, that's the thing. You know, he, there's no point in, in taking those re-rolls into, into, into the loser's bracket, right? You know, he, has to, he has to win the game here. And, and, you know, Andy going down from three re-rolls to one that turn. Is a big, big swing if it does get to overtime. Huge using two rerolls on one turn. Maybe he should have sucked up, yeah, the 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 fail on the on the big and especially as he wasn't going to reroll the hit on the ball. Uh, maybe he should have, you know, modified his plans. Um, you know, when he rolled that that both down because now all of a sudden, yeah, Art's through here and it he's not completely through. It's not completely safe, but it's uh, it's pretty pretty looking. You know, it's. Not looking bad for uh, Andy, but it's looking uh, increasingly more uh, dodgy. Yeah. <laughs> is, that, yeah. Is that the right word? Dodgy? Yeah, is it's that? dodgy. It's getting there. It's getting to be a problem, right? Like, if, if he yeah. kept this frenzy back last turn, then all of a sudden the frenzy is over here and, and everything can come around. Yeah. Now it's, it's getting, yeah, it's getting a bit dodgy. A bit dodgy. Like, he, he can pull back. He can pull back this guarder, for example, and put him right back, so... It's only a bit dodgy, but it's, you know, it's that, that's when you want it to not be dodgy, right? Like, at the end of the day, or the, the other the six turns are kind of faffing about. And then the seventh turn, you've got to get into range. Yeah. And the eighth turn, you've got to score. So so having a great turns one to six doesn't really mean much if you let them pass and, and let them, you know, let them get into range and or score. Huge, uh, huge non-knockdown, because that means the snotling gets to keep the screen uh, so that he can't get past that snotling and put another player onto the gutter runner. Like if he powered this guy, mm -hmm. somebody could have come around and got in front of the gutter as well. I could, I, no, no, he can't. I was looking for a jump. That was really good by Andy though, spotting that jump. I think jumps are one of the like jumping is a new mechanic in in Blood Bowl three from Blood Bowl two and 
you know the previous 30 years and yeah. uh you know good spot by andy seeing that jump opportunity maybe maybe you shouldn't have gone for it but it was a good spot at least really good spot and you know well, i think that's, that's one of the, one of the biggest leaks in top players gameplay is going to be spotting these jumps i think it's something you should up you know people should probably try and get into their mind to like just look for a jump at the start of the turn just so that you know they won't miss them when they're really good is it you know having played the game for as as, as long as you have and other players do you, do you find that it's with these when like a new rule like that is it is it is added to to the likes of Bloodborne three is it hard to kind of change your mindset about those those additional kind of um things you can do in the game is because you, you kind of you play a certain way for so long is it a welcome change you kind of think oh this is very different i, I gotta start thinking different i mean it must be it must definitely switch up dynamics at least anyway when it comes to each of the matches you go enter into yeah, yeah, the jumps especially. The uh, the reroll change, while being a huge change, it's something that I think I well, I personally very quickly adapted to to using you know the availability of the extra reroll, being more adventurous with like uh, you know going for crazy plays. I just straight away did that. Um, there's another thing with mighty blow only works in your own turn. So mm -hmm. the, like things like the rat ogre and the the troll you were always scared to hit them because they'd knock you over with mighty blow now that if you fail they they don't hit you with mighty blow it's it's much it's much nicer to uh hit trolls in bad situations when you n would never think about it so a lot of them were like instant uh you know instant uh, adaptations but i think the the jump with it being a bit rare and a bit niche and like so unlike what you like you know you're used to all the patterns and stuff by playing a long time you just get used to all of the patterns and stuff and the fact that this kind of changes the patterns that you followed for so long it's uh yeah pretty 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 big deal the um the jumping specifically yeah so yeah we can uh just a double dodge for the snotling gets him through two three four five and puts him there oh it's not what I would have done, but I guess it's okay. Maybe he's going to double dodge with a goblin through that side. Yeah, I preferred I preferred bringing the snotling through here a lot more, actually. What's I mean? Obviously, we can see that the ball's only three spaces away from the touchdown to, to square things up here. What's Andy in his fifteenth turn? What's the first thing he has to do to ensure that doesn't happen? He's got to hope this guy fails <laughs> for a start, and he doesn't fail. So now he's he can run around with this guy. I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. So he's got he's got to try and hit with the blitzer. I think. I think anything else isn't going to cut it. You know, like blitzing somebody. A lot of people, you know, um, a bit of an element of his helping beginners. You know, they say make your safe moves first. Um, it force your opponent to roll dice. That's better than you rolling dice because you might fail dice rolls. But there's an element of that. But you know, there's also there's no point hoping that Art rolls a one in thirty six because that's you know three percent. Art isn't going to roll that three percent. So you have to roll harder dice yourself. You know, if, if the chance of him making this play would maybe be uh, you know say twenty percent or whatever. I don't know off the top of my head. I'm, I'm not even thinking of the play. But for example, even a fifteen percent chance or a ten percent chance, which is pretty low, right? It's still better you try something with a ten percent chance of success than hoping your opponent fails a three percent fail, right? Yeah. So he, I think he's got to uh, got to make the big boy play of these Dodgers. The big boy play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's actually going to be quite low um, odds of doing this. At fifteen percent, maybe I don't know. Again, I can, it's hard to work out on your head when you. Oh look, fifteen percent, Jay. I was good, good, good from Jim. Hard, hard to think about <laughs> when you know trying to think of all this stuff to do quick maths in your head. Yeah, I'll take your word for it. Fifteen percent sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah, I was bang on. Yeah, it's right yeah. though, Demi. It's right. Time and time again, you'll see people doing the, the safe play that doesn't really do enough. And and yeah, okay, it's a better fail state. It's make your opponent roll the dice, but that that's not always the way. It's you know, here he's he's got to take it into his own hands and he's got to roll his fifteen percent success. He could run great. through the snotlings. Oh that might be an Andy thing to do. <laughs> that might be an Andy thing to do. Well diagonally through the middle? Yeah. He's not doing it though, he's doing kind of safe play that probably isn't gonna be enough. We'll see though, you know, maybe he's spotted a better way to get in the way. But, um, see now. Mm. 
guess chat we should ask will andy be able to stop the art attack <laughs> keep it at 1-0 or we feel that art will go all the way and take it to an overtime i'm looking forward to seeing um oh <laughs> you gotta use that i mean four minutes 28 left of the clock as well here uh that as uh, yeah is crucial time for andy as well yeah. oh my god what a moment that is unbelievable that is absolutely unbelievable so art will have been so happy that he randomly you know ko'd this guy last turn but the problem was frenzy left him on the troll the troll smashed the rat ogre and oh that's really that's devastated art's chance in overtime if he gets there um at the moment one two three four five six seven no he can't go that way at the moment it's looking like a three two or maybe snotling dodges to uh help it's it's not actually super easy to hit this this is maybe maybe this was good by andy you know, maybe maybe this was enough but a three two is is still about you know not very much to fail <laughs> uh, probably like 12 to 13 percent or something so he should he should he You've should get so this through through on we'll see uh, it looks like three two is the best i, I don't see anything better myself I, I guess you you could you could dodge this snotling off to here, and then you could two plus away and then one dice block. I guess that's better, but then you're more likely to use a reroll, and you've only got two rerolls, so you probably wanna probably wanna run the risk of a slightly worse percent score, but then a much improved chance of winning in overtime. The thing is, though, North Dive, it's not a three plus because it might. Oh, you can go and you get the extra. Oh, he's made the extra dodge to make it a two dice. Yeah, lovely, lovely play from Art. Lovely play from Art makes the makes the extra dodge to make it a two plus. Um, a two dice. So yeah, so now it's a two plus for a two D. Yeah, really, really good. See, this is the sort of this is the kind of reason that I didn't take Underworld right because I didn't see moving moving through there. Um, so. He does do that though. Great, great play by Art. And should get the touchdown. He does. There we go. Art ties things up, baby. <laughs> yeah, great, great touchdown from Art. Um, five two pluses to replace a three plus, but they were they were all with dodge, right? And and five three pluses, five two pluses is is I think it's worth it. Well, maybe it isn't. <laughs> if they're all three percent. Maybe it isn't worth it. Yeah, uh, who knows? But let let's say it was good. Let's say it was good, and it was a, it was a cool thing to do, wasn't it? It it looked cool. Uh, there's some value in that, isn't there? Hundred <laughs> yeah, percent. It looked good. Yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> yeah. Failed miserably, but it looked great, and that's what we, that's that was a really good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My gosh. Oh, so I mean, obviously we're we're very close now to that kind of that the uh, the overtime, you know, being this uh, turn sixteen. Um, what is the, in your opinion, Jimmy? You know, the the years of uh, of experience that you have here. What's what is uh, each of our players? You know, what is both Art and and um, Andy's kind of you know best course of action given that overtime as well here. You know, obviously we can see one versus a two rerolls here, but how are they going to how are they going to go about ensuring their their progression to the next round in the winners bracket? Well, they, they want to win the toss, first of all. That's the biggest thing they can do. 50-50 um, coin flip. If you win that, you're greatly favoured to score. I think if if Andy wins the coin flip, he's almost certainly wins. I think if Artemis wins the coin flip, he's he's got a very good chance. But I do think I think Andy's going to have a better chance on defence. I think that with, with the Rat Ogre out... The uh, the sneaky git out. I think there's a lot less, you know, damage potential from Art. But I mean, we we saw him squeeze through and score there using only two rerolls. So you know, and and Andy is down in ten players. Uh, I think you know a lot of it just comes down like mental strength and stuff. You know, like the mental game. I think that's going to be the, mm -hmm. the the big element here. Uh, 
both of them both of them went out in round one of the cup a lot and I don't know if that is a knock on their mental fortitude or not it's it, interesting isn't it you know lots of people you know you know s- said things like a choke artist and stuff for, for both of them and you know it's not true right because they've both won you know they've both won loads of uh Andy's won loads of tabletop tournaments he's won blitz pit and stuff he's he, he ended up winning the blood bowl two cup eventually and uh, you know art's got an incredible win rate and ladder so but you know that then the mental aspect is you know we're, we're just we're just guys playing this in our free time right there's no there's no esportsman here so <laughs> and even if there were even if there were you know like cristiano ronaldo gets nervous and has bad games doesn't he so yeah the, the, men, the mental aspect is a is a big element for sure i think that's probably the biggest thing I mean, it's definitely it's definitely a thing i think um fatigue as well obviously comes into yeah. you know massively too i mean you i mean would you agree that kind of, you know, if you're if it's it's been a, a long one it can really affect the way in which you kind of make decisions as well 100 percent. there was a, a great community cup was uh the blitz pit though with that we uh Gdynik used to run and uh he's going to get in the surf here and he lo- loves to surf it looks like he'll be getting the surf and uh you know, in that, you had to play loads and loads of games of Blood Bowl. It was like, you know, like, a bit like this, you know, like, si- yeah. si- similar kind of idea with this, the, the, the schedule for this. And, and you know, it, it takes such a toll. It takes such a toll mentally. It takes such, you know, intense concentration for long periods of time, and, you know, because you can make one mistake and lose the game because of it, you know, like easily. Easily, if uh, you know, if uh, if Andy, you know, could just move one player one square wrong and it loses him the game, that that you know, you can argue that Art was one square wrong when when Andy had the three plus to hit the ball. So you know, what one mistake can lose you a game that you've played, you know, nearly two hours for. So you really have to focus for such an extended period of time. Fatigue absolutely a, a factor. Yeah, where brain, brains were fried after <laughs> after um, after blitz pits. And, Penguin Academy is one so art. I think this is better for the game. I think it's it's obviously not better for Andy, but I think it's better for the game that Art wins the toss here. Um, art still has eleven players. Andy only has ten. Um, and you know, but obviously Andy uh, Art has lost his best player. His absolute best player is gone. Yeah, yeah. Oh well, not best. Most damaging player. His best player is his utter runner, which he still has, and he's got two re rolls. And you know he can do the same the same things he did in the second half, Dakar, and hope for the best. But he doesn't have he doesn't have the strength five frenzy claw mighty blow to to you know punch a hole. So his punching a hole ability is has been smashed to pieces. Really, like it's just yeah. going to be so hard. All of this guard and the strength four, he's going to find it a lot more difficult to break through this time than he did yeah. last time. You mentioned you mentioned that you know that RT has been playing you know in the last, you know. 50 games or so whatever it might be with with underworld i mean in this given situation like losing a player like you know like like your rat ogre there would that have happened many times you think and, to, and he's been able to kind of play himself in this same situation or is it kind of a, a kind of like a, a rarity that something like this might happen it, it, it's not so rare. Uh, rat ogres are a bit brittle, right? You can see AV nine plus you only have to roll yeah, yeah. a nine or more on two dice and he was getting hit by mighty blow so that essentially becomes an A-plus to break his armor. So, you know, rogers are really, really, really powerful, but they're also really brittle. So, yeah, you know, you do your utmost to protect him uh, at all times. It's it's why he was just zoned out the whole of the first half, basically, because he knew if he got him up, he'd get knocked down again. And if he got knocked down again, he's got a good chance of getting knocked out. So, yeah, he, he will be used to playing without the Rat Ogre. But, it, yeah, again, he's not going to be happy about playing without the Rat Ogre. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fifty games is like a week for Artemis <laughs> playing Blood Bowl. <laughs> it's a busy weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could only squeeze in fifty. Only fifty. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was a uh, there was somebody in Blood Bowl two who like in six weeks he played four hundred games. And jeez, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's uh, Artemis's approach those levels sometimes. I don't, I don't think he's got as many in as Dirtle Chris did, but he's he's approached that kind of level sometimes. He's he really, you know, he he, he has hammered Blood Bowl a fair amount. <laughs> <laughs> oh, officious ref, who is it? Stunder player. Oh, oh, but a sent off one. The throw is sent off for they both got they both got affected by it. Oh wow! And uh, and the thrower is sent off. So now now Andy is down to nine players, and it's going to be real hard for him to defend with nine. 
because now he doesn't even get like the the standard defense if you like is uh is columns to the to there, to there, to there, to there. And now with only nine players, he can't even call them. So uh, that's a bit of a wild swing. Wait, he doesn't pick up with a gutter runner. Does, does he know the ball's over here? <laughs> oh, he's got, he's got, he's, so I guess he's going to pick up with a thrower and then maybe hand off. So I think you, were su you were suggesting there, Jimmy, he had literally taken his eye off the ball. I had to squeeze that. I had to squeeze it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was a thing that it doesn't happen too often. Yeah. Yeah. No. That, that's good. It's actually quite good. It's actually quite smart. It means that he guarantees that the, because the ball's deep, um, he can get. He can make these dodges. Yeah. He's going to try and. Oh, I'm well, not really. Do it, but go that way a little bit. Um, he can make these dodges off, move everybody back, and then now that the fail, it's less likely to fail here. And he'd rather fail in the middle next to the gutter runner with everybody having moved first. So it is actually pretty, pretty nice to do this, uh, do it this way. This, this, this is the way like the, he adds an extra one in nine failure, but mm -hmm. it, it just, it tidies the whole thing up. <laughs> what was the national dish of Wales in 1994? Thank you, Dimmy, for that <laughs> brilliant yeah. question. I, I can reset, I, I mean, I've become a 1994 aficionado now. I know everything about 1994. <laughs> Uh, official <laughs> what national dish of Wales? Right. Don't don't anybody else look. Don't 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 be like that. Okay. I I I don't know if anyone has ever categorised the national dishes of the year in Wales, but we'll still see. Okay. Um, okay. I I have found a random video, which is uh. Oh my god! Oh my god! I mean, as as brilliant as Dimmy is for posing that question, and and as hilarious as the answer, no doubt is that was massive. Um, Andy does the GFI to hit, fail was a rush nowadays. Rolls a one, removes his glitter. So now he's had two guys casualties thanks to the referee the and the GFI. And yeah, now all of a sudden he's only got like eight players on the pitch, and nobody Pretty over smart. here. So oof. We, we, honestly, we might see like. Artemis not do anything for a minute as he just chortles to himself. <laughs> because wow. I think he's going to, he's turned from like, you know, on the edge of defeat to I think he's going to be, I think he's going to be very, very happy right now. Wow. That is brutal look, Randy. Brutal. He'll blame the coin toss. That's who he'll blame. Yeah. It's a stupid yeah. coin toss. <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> you, you, that was a really good impression you did of him there. Yeah, I could, I could, Thanks, I, I could, <laughs> I could I was, picture him saying that completely. I was channeling my inner Devo. Yeah. <laughs> but those kind of moments, you know, obviously that's uh, you know, I guess you have to. You have, these are the situations that you have to kind of find something, find something, or you to turn it around back into your favor again. But Andy, you're right. Eight down to eight players. Yeah, it, it's it's going to be it's going to be tricky for sure. Um, I'm just thinking, we talked earlier on about the kind of the, what, what happens for you guys at home just catching up as well in terms of the tables and the leaderboards and such as well, how this affects things. If uh, if Andy does in fact lose one, he'll play Plotness instead there. And mm -hmm. uh, Art goes on to face Caltroop, who is rocking humans. I mean, as you said, you know, I think that's a much better a much better situation for Art facing Caltroop in the next round. But uh, Plotness versus Andy, how would that how would that look for Andy or Plotness in the, for that matter? I think that one does favour Andy. I think, I think it, it doesn't really matter much for Andy who he plays, Cold Trip or Plotinus. Um, I think Orcs are pretty favoured against both of those teams. Uh, favourite for, favoured for different reasons and different ways, but I still think uh, Andy would be quietly confident uh, versus versus either of those guys. Honestly, uh, I was not looking forward to any. Or I, I played Dwarfs when, when I when I you know in the play-ins, and I was not looking forward to any any uh, Orcs <laughs> matchups at all. So yeah, I think that's. I mean, not, not you know, not complete, not as wildly favoured as maybe lizard men would be against dwarves, but I think he'll be pretty confident. Yeah. <laughs> and your art losing twice in the first round would be a pinnacle of their tournament careers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this, uh, that was pretty funny, isn't it? He's just in range of hitting with a wrestle, so I'm, I'm sure this guy will blitz him. But it, he's doing his safe moves first, I think, and maybe he'll be thinking about jumps this time after uh, after not. I don't, I don't like this. I, w I would have wanted somebody further up. Maybe he's going to keep the ball nowhere near there. Maybe he's going to keep the ball here. 
How do you feel about yeah, because it's yeah, yeah. It's a bit far for this guy to go around. Ask me again, but there's more blood on the field. Yeah. Gets the knockdown. Not easy to surf. Um, you know, he's got he's got the frenzy here to do a surf, but it, if he blitzes there, he, he'd have to fill these two squares, which he just can't. You could blitz him, but then he can't get the surf afterwards. So yeah, he's protected from the surf very well. Everything's fine. <laughs> do you know what, Julie? I'm sure I'm sure Aunt Miss is the same with lo losses to goblins. <laughs> um, Oh, cousin Herbert, yes, there are there are two more games planned this evening. Yep, and and Andy did eventually win. Yeah, yeah. To be fair, to be fair, uh, Andy, although he got this reputation for losing in the first round of of Chalice, he did end up winning it all. Um, it was kind of inevitable, really. Honestly, like he kept qualifying with great teams, and it was kind of crazy how he kept losing in the first round. <laughs> so it was inevitable. I thought that he was going to win. Uh, funny, funny enough, these three play these three players that have been moved removed from getting two of them sent off. What, well, one was a foul, one was a kickoff event, and one was a GFI. Not one of them was made by <laughs> those three was anything to do with Artemis. <laughs> it means that with one being the troll, he's so slow and has to roll the four plus to do anything now. This is really, really, really dodgy. Really dodgy for uh, for Andy. That's absolutely right on our schedule. For you guys watching at home here, we do in fact have those two games uh, that will be coming your way today. I have three tomorrow as well as we whittle our way down to get the uh, the six who are qualifying for next weekend. Don't forget, this is a, a, a double weekend, a dual weekend of Blood Bowl 3 season finals action. So obviously uh, next weekend will be uh, where our grand finals take place. But uh, players, we, we lose 10 players over the course of these two days, Jimmy, which is which is unreal, really. But again, yeah. we you know, must champion the fact that we could actually watch all this and it together in the production from watching at home as well here which i think nathan have done a superb job doing so because i think everyone was uh was crying out for something like this and it's, and it's, it's it worked wonders thus far everyone seems to be loving this thing yeah yeah it's re it really is really really been great uh, you know the whole community's come together all these games you know all the best players like well not all there were, <laughs> there were a few players that missed out <laughs> but um you know re a bunch of really good players and, some fantastic uh, players yeah some fantastic <laughs> players <laughs> Yeah. Some, yeah. some fantastic players and honestly you know like I, I wasn't just trying to big myself up you know like there, there were like uh, you know there, there's a few there's a bunch of names I could message that, that could have been involved but you know no one's out of place really right like this is really really top really great top 16 fantastic bunch of guys and uh, yeah it's 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 great to see great to see for Blood Bowl again it's fantastic and now yeah look Art's turning the corner here um he might make a bunch of dodges with his snotling to like screen. He might this other snotling can come through as well to hold the top side and then try with the uh, goblins afterwards. So ooh, he's not holding the top side without goblin. Uh, the snotling. Maybe he's gonna. Mm, I don't know. I guess he just wanted to tag out the uh, frenzy there. Uh, he's used a fair bit. I mean, this is slow play for Artemis. He must really be trying. Um, because, you know, or struggling, <laughs> one of the two, uh, you know, like, maybe, you know, Andy's put him in a lot of uh, pickles, so, you know, it's, obviously he's, he's struggling here, Art, but he's, uh, he's getting through it, isn't he, just about, like, uh, three minutes is not too always, so, yeah, he's going for the basing, basing strategy, I guess he wants to punch somebody, this goblin, maybe, uh, dodges off so he can punch. It's interesting. I thought he'd have gone for more dodges and try to screen off the uh, the orcs because you know these are movement five now. This guy's movement six. He he can get back in front of uh, Art here. He's really really uh, basing heavily. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So interesting. So I, I kind of like it. I kind of like what he's done, but. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure it was the best way of doing it, but it, it's worked. <laughs> oh, there's that guy's dead. The, the problem is, like, it's fine for this turn. The problem is, it, it leaves you open to, like, you know, these guys can all get killed. <laughs> Everyone who's getting touched can die. And then these other guys can run back. So, yeah, he's going to go there and try and move the troll. 
the troll can't even go you know very far or do much either so you know maybe that was the call out made he thought okay he's going to take some hits and these guys can move but can, can they move far enough maybe not hmm rolling the one there as well i mean i think the i mean do you, i mean would you say with artemis you know he obviously wanted to focus on on damage a lot more with this kind of underworld squad now he's having to kind of like think i think as all, all players will come in again you know up in season finals all players will come into this situation it's an inevitable where they're going to have to make decisions and change things up and, and adapt to that as well here but i think for art you know this will be if, if he can get this if he can break away now i think given the situation at the beginning of the match to now it's, it's a huge a huge switch up for him and i think uh really positive for the next round at least anyway Oh, for sure, yeah, yeah, and it, you know, it looks like he's made the correct assessment, right? Like looking at it now, yeah, okay, mm. okay, these guys can block, but they're not getting back, are they? You know, like he, he's going to have to blitz with the, he's going to have to blitz the wrestler here, probably with a blitzer, and then like run back and then run bit, this guy back. It's it, with only one rear, he's not getting enough cover back. So yeah, maybe, maybe this was a, a really good read by Art in what he had to do uh, the previous turn, and you know, maybe maybe like going a bit. Maybe making the different moves and maybe he's a bit more conservative wouldn't have paid off as well as this. And oh yeah, he'll be he'll be made up out. Yeah, I'm sure he thought he was going out when 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 his rattle got injured. I'm sure he thought I'm definitely going to lose the toss and I'm definitely going to lose the game. Uh, but then yeah, winning right. the toss and then these two, you know, the the send off, yeah, the send off yeah. thrower and the the G, uh, rush fail has is completely turned the game around. In those two turns as well, like it happened so so it, so close together as well. Um, there was almost no time to react to the initial sending off until something else happened again and, it, and, and change things up for a second time. Yeah, yeah. Again, and mentally, right? That's 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 a problem as well for Andy, yeah. isn't he? he? Just won't have he won't have got over one shock and then straight into another, and now he's got to keep playing. And it's, it's tough. It is really is tough. Right? And it sounds stupid saying uh, saying it's tough playing a little children's game, but <laughs> it really is. You know, like you, you struggle with this. It's. Uh, it's really tricky. You've got to think a lot. Like it's, uh, it's funny that, that us nerds have, you know, like, you know, playing this game for so long and like, but it is really, really deep as well. It's, it's, so, it's so like tactically complex, uh, despite being, you know, essentially made as a beer and pretzels game. That you know, that when, when Games Workshop made it, they really just hit on kind of like a magic formula that you know people have enjoyed for decades. I don't think Andy got overconfident. I, I think he, I think he was a perfectly, a perfectly reasonable amount of confident. <laughs> and then, and then just the dice said, no, no, yeah. <laughs> no. Now you're overconfident. You should not have been that confident. I think, <laughs> I think he was the correct amount of confident. I, I guess Art's going to blitz back, and he's going to blitz the, blitz him. I, I, he could have blitzed back when, when and, uh, and then just got these guys through. Like if it's a power, all of these guys come through. Quite like blitzing this, but you know this guy can't can't do anything to do with the ball. So I guess he thought blitz the guy to do with the ball, and then get this guy out in a three is pretty good, and this guy out as well. So yeah, it make, makes a lot of sense. Um, it's funny that Artemis hates people standing in this column here. The reason being that if you get knocked over, the ball could go in the crowd. What what that means is that this guy could touch the ball and give Artemis a three percent chance of losing, right? If he if he can't hit it. Whereas if he'd been one over, then uh, maybe maybe Andy couldn't have touched him at all, and he would have had a guaranteed score. But interesting, interesting little thing. I think he thinks too much about this. How bad this column is. I don't think it's as bad as as Art thinks it is. But you know, it's technically safer if he can't get hit. The problem is if he does get hit because he's standing in it. Oh, he's going to go up the backside. So that's pretty. That's pretty decent. That that shuts down this guy making any kind of crazy dodges. Surprised he blocked uh, blocked this guy off because he's going to stand this guy up now as as his last action, surely. And forget to do that on the regular as well. Always forget <laughs> to bring the, to stand players back up again. Think. What are you? What am I doing? <laughs> I think maybe his plan was to d dodge this guy out, but now because he's put this guy here instead of there, he just can't do the dodge out. And you know, 
surely he's got to stand him up. He's better standing than not standing. So he, he mm-hmm. just has to stand him up right now. But maybe he just refuses to out of absolutely obstinacy that, you know, he's he's made a turn ordering error. He, he can't let people know he's made a turn order, but he has. <laughs> and he does stand him up. <laughs> right. It's a- Andy turn 21. I mean, what what to do to prevent the inevitable here, Jimmy? Roll a whole bunch of dice <laughs> like you've never rolled dice before. Yep. That's the solution. That, that roll the dice, it. baby. Roll that is dice. all he can do, yeah. That is all he... Oh, okay. Um... <laughs> he, needs to, he needs to punch this guy and then punch this guy. And then if this, if this one can roll a six plus, he can dodge in between these two. And then he can punch, chain this guy forward in this square, and then he goes one, two, three, four, five, six, GFI, GFI. So he can hit the ball if he... Uh, He's got all the six plus to do it, which you know, not the most likely thing, but it's possible. It's totally, but it's the only thing he can do. I, I think trying some kind of safer, um, safer play is just not not going to do anything. So I think he, I think he will see this. Uh, you know, Andy does love, Andy does love a good chain. Um, but yeah, I, well, I think this is a mistake. I think this was the only play he could do. I think, I think. Maybe, maybe he can come back and do something, you know, like, maybe. <laughs> the, the problem is, I just, I feel like it's going to be too little too late at this point, you know, even if he does get players over. Maybe, maybe it's not, you know, I, I, I could be wrong. <laughs> I may be fantastic, but I'm not perfect, obviously. I'm, I'm sure Andy would have seen that and, and written it off, you know, because it's like, you've, you've got to think about if you can hit the ball and how desperate it is to hit the ball. And I thought it was that desperate, and he must have just not thought it was that desperate. But I think it's pretty desperate. <laughs> like, it's definitely... We both thought it was very desperate. <laughs> he just thought it wasn't desperate enough. <laughs> but we both know it's desperate. Um, yeah, the problem is that the gutters run is so fast and has an extra turn for free. Whatever happens, even if he, even if he starts his turn with a double one. Free, he's just he's just getting out of range this turn. Completely out of range, I'm I'm pretty sure. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, double GFI. Yeah, completely hundred percent out of range this turn. So so that's the first thing you do is stand the gutter runner wherever you want on the back row, probably in the centre, so he's got the option to go either way next turn. And then you think about all of the other players that can move and roll two pluses and stuff, but uh Looking super strong for Artemis. He's going top right, okay. Yeah, interesting. I mean, he's going to get more players over there. Like, it, it's easier to protect one side than protect the, you know, yeah. like the whole field. So he's he's trying to, you know, he's going to try and put a kind of a strong line here, which will stop him breaking through and stop him threatening on the last turn. Yeah, I think maybe maybe the Black Oak had to like double GFI last turn as well, just get deeper. You know, like he, it was it was it was obviously a horrible horrible spot for Andy, and he had to like he obviously recognised it, and it's just you know he thought he could get away with this. I just don't think it's enough. I don't I don't know how he forces Artemis to score next turn. Well, maybe he will. That that helped. That helped starting with a Goblin dodge instead of a Snotling dodge. Snotling's dodging a two plus. He he could have just had this guy out much more likely than the goblin. Maybe he had plans for that guy later, but uh I feel like doing your snot snotling dodge first was better. <laughs> it's idiot square. Yeah, Artemis calls this idiot square. <laughs> because again Why? you could you could get knocked into the corner and uh the ball could go into the crowd. Uh, but of course, if he was this, this is the stall. We call this one the stall, the stall square here, because you're three squares away. So that if you get knocked over there, the ball can only go into the end zone or on the sideline. Whereas uh, in here, it can go quite likely go in the crowd. But the problem is, um, if he was stood in the stall square, the the big one could just hit him. Well, he could base him. He couldn't hit him. He could base him, and he doesn't. He doesn't want to get based. But well, the idiot square is pretty funny. I mean, only Artemis calls it that. <laughs> Other people just call it a square that you use sometimes, 
if you can't use the stall square. <laughs> it really rolls off the tongue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the column, you know, like the, the column he called yeah, it yeah, Chunt's yeah. column because of Crystal Hunter, short yeah. to Chunter, and then so he called he calls this Chunt's column because he uh, he played he, well, Sol played. Uh, Crystal Hunter one game and he just kept doing it and was going crazy about it how bad it was but I don't think it's that bad you know like if it if it's making somebody make an extra gear fight to hit you or whatever it can often be worth it so pretty much everything in Blood Bowl is is situational the golden rule of Blood Bowl is do it sometimes <laughs> and, do it sometimes <laughs> yeah and it, yeah, sometimes. anything and it, no matter what it is you know like it, it could be the most basic thing should I do this and it's like well yeah sometimes <laughs> I don't think so. What what Art could do is run back and make a bunch of dodges to stall it. He doesn't. He doesn't think about it for anywhere near as long as he could. Right? He's got two minutes. Uh, even if he, even if his initial assessment was this is obviously a good idea, there was no reason to not think for two. You know, not take the two minutes. He could have gone had a drink. You know, maybe he's trying focus or something. Maybe he thinks keeps the pressure on Andy. So, you know, so Andy's got less time, you know, Andy's under the cosh, right, losing all these players. He's lost his thrower, really big for the two-turn score. It's so hard for uh, Orcs to score a two-turn now with, uh, you know, with uh, animosity doesn't help as well without any, any team. All of their throw, Biggins can't throw at all. And Blitzers have animosity to uh, everyone on the team. And they've only got a passing ability of four plus, used to be a three plus. So, like, everyone's just so bad at passing. That, uh, that actually the thrower is a really good shout for these kind of games where you need a two-turn score. So maybe he just thinks, you know, send it over as fast to Andy as possible. Maybe that was his thinking. But uh, I think he probably should have thought about it a little bit longer and see if there any, you know, just explore the possibility of running back. Even if you're going to discard it, you know, you might as well think about it for a minute, I guess. You, there's not much thinking you have to do after it. <laughs> I mean, this is very, this is very, very, very difficult to turn for Andy. He's he's put the uh, Art's put the sidesteppers on the sidelines to protect the sidelines, which is a good shout. Can't get surfed. Well, they're very, they're a very easy player to dislodge, and give Andy a player down the sideline. So maybe what he'll do is put them in front of a a real player, mm -hmm. so they're completely locked down the side. I think locking down the sidelines is a is a pretty good shout at this point. He could have spent the two minutes thinking about his setup. He could have done actually, yeah. That's a good point to me. That's actually a really good point. He could have thought two minutes thinking, how am I going to... He could have used that two minutes to think, how am I going to set up? I guess the you know the, the other argument is it would have given Andy two minutes to think about how he was going to score uh, you know, you know his plans for this. So, interesting thing to use, like, you know, use the time bank and use the, the turn timers to, like, you know, e either send it back to your opponent as quick as possible or... Uh, I think it was Inarian uh, played somebody who only you know had like thirty seconds left, so he was deliberately speeding up on his turns to try and put his opponent back in, you know, and keep him under under time pressure. That's certainly a yeah. certainly a factor in the, kind of these high level ones. You know, you'd never you'd never think about it in a normal ladder match, but uh, in these, yeah, there's there's a lot to be said for it. It's very draining to play to play you know these games back to back, especially mm. like you know not such a factor in this one, but if this, this was like you know. The best of three, and they're just playing back to back and back to back and back to back. Then there's a lot Gosh, to be said yeah. for that kind of thing. And you know, this is getting on for two hours now, isn't it? And you know, this is a been a long game of blood ball. They're, they're, they're both mentally frayed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, do you think that? I mean, you, had, you talk about pressure there as well. Do you think there's an element to the fact that you know, as you, we've said already, this is a, this is an amazing kind of opportunity these next two week, you know, two weekends that we're kind of broadcasting all the action of the season finals here. Does that kind of add a pressure in its own at all? The fact that it is kind of like a, on a on a bigger scale, perhaps the usual. Do you think that will kind of affect? Uh, and obviously, Andy's part of our broadcasting too. But um, would it affect players? Whether it be Andy, Arty, or otherwise, I mean, it, it's got to, hasn't it? It, it just has yeah. to. Like, uh, it, no, no matter how rich somebody may be, uh, <laughs> two grand is is nothing to be sw sniffed at on the financial front. And of course, the glory, uh, although glory can't buy kebabs, everybody everybody wants to win this tournament for sure. <laughs> That's uh, wait, wait, who who said that? Shakespeare. <laughs> Fine, actually, he's 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 oh. basically modern day Shakespeare. I did steal okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, glory can't buy kebabs that's a great t-shirt 
it is, yeah. It's a great yeah, t-shirt. Man, man we, need, we need the merch line here, sir. Pick up, pick up the, fantastic, the Jimmy Fantastic store. You get greetings cards, trophies, and obviously now t-shirts with, uh, with that on it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is actually quite a good blitz, not to actually blitz, but just to reinforce the weak points in, in his screen, I think. I think this is a nice little... I mean, maybe you could just run down the gut runner, but I don't think he will. I think he'll just make a stronger screen. Uh, bring players across just because you know Andy's team is so slow. Mm -hmm. It's a big factor, isn't it? I'm not having the same pay. I mean, they're so different. The pay, the pace, and the, the the speed of the teams does make an enormous difference here. I think um, more limited. You know, as 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 Andy's numbers dwindle as well. We saw what happened at the beginning of the second half. There it just makes it a whole lot harder to keep up when you've got the less and less players. They're down to eight players after that was was, God, was tricky, very mm -hmm. tricky. Brutal, I mean, brutally difficult, you know, like the first half, it, you know, it, you know, it looked easy for Andy, right? But part of that was the fact he had the 11 players. If, if you take, if you know, that, that first half, if you start Andy with eight players and, it, you know, even giving him eight turns, it's suddenly, you know, how the hell is he going to do it? So, so the eight turn drive would have been hard with eight players. The two turn drive is, is unbelievably difficult. Yeah, You're almost impossible. <laughs> yeah, I think Art has played. I think Art has played worse than normal. Uh, I think Dimmy said, but you know, it is the it is the pressure. It's, it's a huge factor. It, it really, it genuinely is. Like Art loves to mock people who say playoff nerves, playoff nerves, but it totally is. It totally is. You know, it, he wants to win this. He, you know, he may he may act like it's you know it's no big deal, but you know that's just the way he is, right? Every, every player wants to win this. They wouldn't they wouldn't be playing Blood Bowl if they didn't want to win this. Yeah, you definitely want to walk away. I think, yeah, I think the accolade of being the, the reigning season finals champ, as well as the the cash prize, yes, one doesn't buy kebabs, but still, I think I think the fact that you can um, no injury there. I mean, I think that, that's I think that that definitely plays a, a big factor in any in any kind of competitive kind of any kind of competition there is. There's always that kind of element to it for sure. Yeah. Um, but I think as well, this the, the first game. I mean, you we talked at the top of the, the top of the show there about you know a habit of losing in certain you know first rounds and whatnot as well. There's a kind of a pressure that comes from that too. Um, there's there's all these factors you kind of get, in, get into a, a mental psyche. They they're gonna change the way you you kind of do things strategically, maybe tactically, and kind of you know quickly as well. You know, speed as well, trying to get things done quickly or slow things down. I mean, it's it's, it's all, it all plays an important part. Yeah, 100%. Ooh, doesn't Why get the knockdown. Andy here has to do something pretty miraculous. I think, <laughs> yeah, to, I, don't, to, I, don't, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, answers on a postcard for this one. This is... Uh, <laughs> He's probably, you know, honestly, he's got a better chance of guessing the national dish of Wales in 1994. Yeah, I said earlier on, I, I, I had a quick search. I could find like a video online where someone has like done a video of things to eat in Wales that year. But I didn't, oh, wow. I didn't, I didn't. It was, anyway, for all the pictures that I could see from the thumbnail, most of it looked a bit sloppy and brown. I don't know what it was. Uh, yeah, that, that sounds, was mashed potato. That sounds standard, doesn't it? There's lots of mashed potato there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So he can he can go laterally one and he can get a scoring threat. But he rolled a one. Uh, wait, what? Oh yeah, he's out of reroll. I don't know when he used his last reroll, but yeah, he rolled a one and that is it. That is all she wrote. There is absolutely no way no way for Andy to score now. Um, I, uh, a a 2-1 win for R is uh wouldn't I mean wouldn't have called it at the end of the first half absolutely not you know it looked like Andy was very much kind of in a kind of a driving seat dare I say um yeah. things just changed so fast <laughs> yeah that w it was that one turn wasn't it the uh honestly the send off and the and the failed GFI cars that was that was it that was that was such a game was a monumental swing that turn and from that turn, it looked like all of a sudden Andy, you know, was uphill for Andy in it. No, I still think if he'd won the toss, he might, he might have had a chance. But you know, he, looking at it now, it's it still looks rough, right? With only eight players, um, the, you know, big equaliser with the rattle going out. Um, one of those games where probably both both sides feel they were a bit unlucky, uh, but 
And you know, Andy was definitely more unlucky. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. There we go. Match over. Wow. I mean, un, un, you know, again, what a, what a great way to start things off here. You know, a match that was almost almost two hours in duration too. Think about the kind of like the the mental. The, we talked about the mental kind of um, effect that has in terms of you know fatigue and tiredness, and decision making. Um, yeah. But a great way to start off the the, the official like live broadcasts here with, with, with a match like that. We knew we knew Art and Andy was going to deliver, and it did, Jimmy. It did. It did, yeah. Great game, right? Great, great, great game. Great swings. You know, you had it had everything. It had a Dakar even from from Andy. Love to see a Dakar. It didn't have the one turn. Uh, you know, he, he again. If if he'd had more experience, maybe he could have got that. Um, but it, it was it was a pretty tough one turn. I think there's not many people in the in the competition that could do that. You know, and the, the people in the competition are much better, much much better than average. <laughs> much, much better than average. I mean, I mean, thinking as well, like both players. Who do you think will be? I guess happiest with the next round, the way in which things are going to go. That I mean, obviously we got Plotinus versus Andy in the next round in the lower bracket. We of course have Art versus uh, Carl Troop in the winners bracket round two. I guess Artemis will be relieved that he's kind of making sure that he's not facing off uh, against the team that could otherwise uh, we not fare well for him. <laughs> yeah, he'll be so happy. I, I I don't think the the opponent would have mattered much to Andy. Um, obviously, he's going to be unhappy in the losers bracket, but I think the 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 opponent not such a big deal for Andy, and I think Art will be over the moon that he's not having to face a dwarf team. You know, so yeah, great great news for Art. It got sweaty. It got very sweaty very quickly, and then, yeah, yeah. it's going to get a lot sweatier. I'm sure that the course of this competition here with matchups equally as frenetic as that one. Um, I mean, we're gonna actually going to hear from Andy very soon as well here, and uh, he, we're going to kind of break it all down as well as prepare for the next match. Of course, here on the broadcast, we're showing three games here today on this Saturday, three tomorrow as well, as we rattle through towards our next weekend where there'll be six left in the competition going into the grand finals weekend here. Um, but I, can, I think as well for players who are who are you know kind of aren't on broadcast right now, been playing behind the scenes, and have got games coming up as well here. No doubt they would have watched that as well here. What do you think they would have taken away from that match as well here? Uh, you know, what do you think they would have kind of you know digested and kind of learnt from uh, those two going uh, toe to toe? Yeah, I, th I think that I think they will pick up on you know Artemis's lack of experience. I think I think he he did show it. I think this. This, you know, this damage build, it did pay off. He didn't get the damage and he won anyway, <laughs> you know? So like, and, and it's going to be scary if the damage does pay off. But, uh, you know, that, 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 what, you know, he has, I don't think he's got the one turn ability that Elliot has maybe, but you know, he's still a top player, top player. And, uh, you know, if he gets the damage, it's going to be, you know, pretty easy for him, right? And he, he, he kind of did get the damage in a way, thanks to the referee <laughs> and, and, and Andy falling yeah. over. So he kind of did get, he did, he, Probably got more damage than he could have, you know, would have thought he was going to get. Honestly, like he got so much damage, just random, random dice rolls made the damage for him. Um, yeah, I think I think that's the takeaway. I think everyone's still going to be scared of Andy. I, and, and, and like they should be. And it, it always comes down to dodgy referees and falling over your own shoelaces. That's that's the real difference maker in Blood Bowl. That's the real <laughs> that's the real difference maker. Um, we've got obviously um, lots of games coming up as well here. And we're going to break them all down. Um, we've got Galentia versus Diom Lord coming up too, which is going to be uh, which is going to be huge. Um, you know, I think that's what that's what we're all looking forward to seeing exactly because the winners bracket is what you want to stay in the winners bracket. Because the winners bracket, you kind of like it's a, it's a cleaner road through to that. You can kind of see just on the horizon, on the hilltops there, uh, that kind of the grand finals. But the lower bracket, it, every single game is a do or die basically. Yeah, yeah, huge pressure now for Andy. Every single game could be the end of his tournament, you know, life. And Art gets the weekend off now, right? There's only losers brackets from here on, um, in terms of the the people who've already won, I think. So, uh, so yeah, I think this is uh, really nice for really nice for Art to have a bit of a break until next next weekend. So that's going to be huge mentally. Whereas, yeah, Andy's going to have to fight his way through. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely now. I mean, I mean, I have no doubt that's that is the case. And I think, yeah, for you guys at home as well to catch up to exactly how this competition has uh, all unfolded thus far. Let's take a look at those brackets and see uh, how they currently look. I obviously, see a lot more populated now with some scores. Uh, let's take a look at those uh, and see how they fare because I think. Yeah, this will give you kind of a great oversight of exactly how this competition ha um, has has been and started thus far. Winners bracket, you can see here. I mean, we can see it's getting there's more names making their way through to that next round here, and already we've got some matches. Only only one left to happen uh, before we know exactly how that second round is going to play out here, Jimmy. 
Oh yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Um, uh, did did you say that's the? Are we are we showing this one live? Galentio versus Dion Lord? Is that is that happening? I next? believe I believe that's the plan. I think I think mm. I, I, I believe that's the plan. We'll we'll wait and see. That's the great thing. A few guys as well, you know, to catch you up with all the kind of like the the scheduling regarding um, our competition too. Players obviously finding the time to play against one another. Uh, Depends what that happens. Uh, given the time we have days this weekend so uh that's what i think is planned uh things may change but we're, we're trying to feature that very very soon here you can see the loser bracket already as well is starting to be populated i mean we haven't really seen these teams of, of course uh that have gone down here these players should i say uh coaches that are in this bottom half any surprises here jimmy that, that are down in the loser bracket yeah this is unbelievable Elliot and christopher well they weren't bankers to win their first game but they were two of the favorites of the competition you know and now you know meeting in the the meeting in the winners bracket was going to be pretty crazy but now that's a potential final meeting in the losers bracket i mean that is absolutely unbelievable if if we could cover Elliot versus christopher um you know i don't know in the, all the scheduling if that, if for the broadcasting that would be an incredible one to see i mean Elliot cruz is the potential final and, and one of them's out guaranteed <laughs> isn't that crazy though i mean that but that, that that's, we, that's i guess jimmy in a way you know kind of we we wanted to kind of see kind of fireworks in the get-go and that's kind of what we got here we kind of seen that some players and, and you and you talked about the caliber as well players that are taking part in this competition this weekend the 16 that have qualified for it um even though there are favorites of course we think might go all the way just goes to show that there are so many you know incredible talents that are competing in this that anything is possible yeah, absolutely. The, the the like the margins are razor thin. You know, loads of people like to say, "Oh, this guy's you know a top player and he's better than him and all this." But the 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 margins are so thin that like, yeah, okay, maybe maybe Elliot is the best. You know, Elliot, Crucifer, Artemis, and Andy. Maybe they're the best four players. But you know, whoever's the fifth best player, it, it's not by much. You know, right? Like, and maybe Strider's in the top four. Maybe, maybe Diamond is. Maybe John Lord is. You know, who knows? Who knows? At the end of the day, it's. There's so little between the top players, um, but you know, I think it's because we mo we know them more. You know, like Cruz has won all those cups, Elliot streams, Andy streams, Art streams. We've seen them play so much that we yeah. kind of think of those as like maybe a tier above when maybe you know everyone's so close that you know maybe we shouldn't think of them like that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I do think, I, yeah, think about that last matchup as well there and, you know, exactly how things played out. I don't think there was, with what happened in the second half, I don't think there was any other, I mean, yes, there could have been maybe a, some kind of, uh, we talk about miracles, some way that Andy could have found his way out of that. But I think half the battle was actually, you know, kind of adapting to what was what was kind of coming at him in terms of the way that, that things played out in those first kind of, what, one or two rounds. Yeah, yeah, he was. It was hard. He would have. He would. Have, he had to make the decision to, you know, start trying crazy stuff. And it's never a decision you want to make, you know. Yeah, and yeah. and and so it made sense to play the way he did. And you know, he did get the two turn chance in the end. Like you know, he he did, he did force the two the, the the early the early ish score from Art. And if he if he'd got three or four turns, obviously he could have got back in. So. It, he, he, maybe he made that assessment. Look, I'm not. I'm not going to stop the score here. You know, things have gone badly. You know, I'm down away players. But if I can do everything I can to force him in early, then you know, give myself a chance. What That's right. Well, for you, yeah, well, for you guys as well. Obviously, uh, that was a very long game. We understand that there. They, we need to have restroom breaks, refreshments, the whole shebang. I think Jimmy and I as well. Um, <laughs> Parched. I mean, I, that used to be a fantastic time for a short break here on the official broadcast here. Uh, we've got loads more Blood Bowl 3 uh, season finals coming your way. Make sure not to go anywhere here. A short break from us. We're back very, very soon with our next match. We're going to welcome in a uh, competitor from the last game, Andy Davo, one of our esteemed broadcast uh, talent team uh, as well, who were joining us to break it all down for us too, as we welcome his casting and analytical skill uh, as well to our, our, our broadcast. So make sure don't go anywhere. Come back in a few minutes' time. Quick break from us. We'll see See you in just a few. Fantastic.